What's up, guys? Welcome to the Full Feature Podcast. I'm Tiernan. I'm here with Jack and Ian. We're your hosts. And this week, we have a guest. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Our, our first official guest who has anything to do with film. <laughs> <laughs> our last guest was such a prototype. But before we get into that, we would like to announce that we are running our second competition on our Instagram this week. And we're looking to send one of our listeners and a friend, <laughs> so, you can, as professional yeah. as possible here, to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> so, Imagine uh, that. We're giving away essentially two cinema tickets. And this is what we wanted to do at the start, but then the whole world shut down yeah. alongside yeah. cinemas. Yeah. So now that Tenet's out in cinemas and it's starting to open up again, like we thought it would be fun to... Or, another competition. Yes, there, there's also the option to come to the cinema with us. If you <laughs> <laughs> but uh, stick around to the end of the podcast to hear more about that and keep an eye out on our Instagram and give us a follow if you're there anyway. But this week we are with Mark McKenna, our friend and actor who was a major role in the Irish phenomenon Sing Street, who was also a part of J.J. Abrams' war slash horror film Overlord and was the title character of the YouTube premium show, Wayne. So, what's up, Mark? How are you? Thanks for coming. I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me. Not bad, not bad. It's, it's so weird that, like, this is, like, a big deal to me, I think, because it's, like, as you said, we actually have a movie person, but it's, yeah. like, we just went to school with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if anyone's wondering how we swung something yeah. like this, it's literally because me and Mark were in business class together. <laughs> <laughs> but as well, like, do you, do you still find, like, whenever I see you, Mark, I always just want to sit you down and just like go at you for an hour. Like, like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> like what is going on in your world? Like, 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 but yeah, obviously pandemic. Sitting out, even pre-pandemic, just <laughs> sitting at home. Like, <laughs> but okay, wait, will you tell us like what was it like? Me and you kind of briefly talk about this at your door when I'm delivering food to you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, tell, tell us what it was like to be in LA during the lockdown. Yeah. Um, in LA, I mean, I was there for overall three months. About I think it was it was eighty nine days exactly because I was on an ESTA, oh, easy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, which lasts ninety days, yeah. and I left on the eighty ninth. But um, I was only supposed to be there for uh, a month, and then everything happened, and I just kind of, I was like, I'm not getting it. Yeah, 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 of course. Then uh, I was trying to see if I could extend the visa, and they wouldn't. Uh, so I just had to. I had to fly home the eighty ninth day, but uh, being there was like. It, it, it seemed fine. Yeah, what, was, was, LA, like, what, I, what was the LA lockdown like? It was when I was there. It was it was grand. Like nothing was like. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I didn't I didn't leave the apartment. Like I stayed in like every every day. But uh, it seemed fine. I think I was maybe being like too cautious. And then I, I left and I got home and it now it's a, just a piece of shit. It's are a different story. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we we have <laughs> like, yeah. 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 we are we are potty mouths in this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it's but, actually ridiculous. Yeah. Like, what was the story? Like, was that just kind of like, like a media thing? When we, because over here it looked like the purge. Like, it yeah. Like, like I mean, like we, we it, were actually recording a podcast the night they were announcing restrictions. Do you remember, um, the three of us were sitting there watching Leo Bragg. Yeah, it felt like slowly. It felt like, it felt so, like the so darkest hour. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember, like, I remember actually seeing the Leo Bragg thing, and I was like, I was like, oh, maybe Ireland's not doing that great and all that. And then I got back to Ireland, and then like the week I got back. Or I'd been home like a week or something like that, and then all the riots broke out, like everything, yeah. all like of all course, the protests, yeah. everything like that, and then like, I mean, obviously, for a good reason, like they have to kind of protest if of it's course, yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same I mean, you time, you don't want to be in a city that's like like people the way police were treating them, like arresting them and so it was like. I mean, it's just hell, not yeah. the kind of city and like being. You, you like, obviously have friends, and I know your your girlfriend's still over there. Like, what yeah. did she say about like the time of the riots? Like, was the did she uh, take part? Did she take part in like the protests or no? Because I think I mean she's extremely uh, supportive of the block lives on movement, yeah. but I think it was just the thing of uh, trying to be safe because. I mean, COVID still exists. Exactly. Yeah. It was such a crazy yeah. time for it to, to oh, happen. Oh, it's such like a fucking melting pot. Like the world is a really scary place at the moment. It really is. Yeah. 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 There was two hurricanes in Florida the other day. Yeah. It was like the first time ever. And it was like a devastating. I, I think America yeah. in general is just burning down. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is. If you go on Twitter right now, you can probably see a burning building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At, at any given time in America. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 And so when you came home, were you relieved or were you like, a big thing I, I, I think is like coming back to Ireland is always a little bit depressing. Oh, extremely, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it was just like we had to sit here all summer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't as bad, I don't think, maybe because I was I was isolating for two weeks and like mm. any any sort of 
like anxieties I have in 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 general life about anything was just yeah. that choice was completely removed. Okay, like I yeah. I couldn't leave my bedroom. Like I just sat there. I think my dad dropped my PlayStation out on my door, and I <laughs> just sat that, there that playing. Was you. Yeah. <laughs> Flat out on my boys. I oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. think the whole world is actually. Yeah. 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 Activision was like, "What a time!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. again. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 me and had some battles. Yeah. Some battles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did three tours of her dance. Yeah. 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 Then, like, then, like, you, you, you come out, and it's like, I was like, "Why am I?" supposed to do it, like yeah. I was like I'm, I'm basically just still isolated yeah, like, I, just, yeah, I can just yeah. move to another room now and, and so how is we, we've heard so much about all like different industries that have been affected by it but a big one is the arts industry and mm. there's like no support there in place like and like obviously you're you're in a band as well you know milk and how is that like affected just your day to day like I mean because it's just put a hold on everything, like live gigs, yeah. you know, even going to auditions and things like that, or even planning auditions. And like, you know, we're hearing about m movies being put on hold and, and TV shows being put on hold. Has that, did you really feel that? Was it like immediately it was like everything's been put the brakes on? Yeah, definitely. There was a, uh, there was a pilot I did back in, I think it was November last year for a show called One of Us is Lying. And uh, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, yeah they, were, they were like, <laughs> in well what i was told anyway it was they were like in the process of picking it up mm. and like that week lockdown happened and it was like yeah they were trying to like work out deals and stuff and then they were like listen we don't we know don't what's know. going on so yeah. we're just gonna have to put a hold on this and then i heard like two weeks ago that it, it like it is going ahead now they have picked yeah. it up but like they they don't know when they don't know where they're gonna film it. It's like, just open the air. Yeah, like, 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 so I'm many, in Seabury, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so many shows, like yeah. Just oh, there's so there. many cancels. Like we were talking about this last week with Netflix, and then like even sent a couple of tweets. But Mark, I have a question for you with pilots. So um, I was listening to uh, I've shared it at this podcast so many times. Christopher Montesanti's goes all about The Sopranos. He turned up to the first episode of The Sopranos, <laughs> and it was a pilot. And the guy turned don't around another to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy turned around to him. One of the other actors was like, "Don't worry, like, like, there's no pressure. Like, this probably isn't going to be taken up." Is that kind of like the vibe on like these kind of pilots, or is it more kind of? Uh, I th I think I've I've definitely been lucky in the sense that the the only two pilots I've done were both very well received. So it was kind mm. of a case of like, well, I mean, the first one, uh, Wayne, which was done for YouTube, like they they hadn't done many TV shows yeah. at the time so I think it was yeah, kind probably of like, like the first it was the first one I think that they booked a lot of money that wasn't the YouTuber I remember I got YouTube like, premium yeah. to watch Wayne and Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai and yeah. I was like this is the best thing ever. why do I ignore YouTube premium so much <laughs> like why yeah, is it yeah. the most ignored mm -hmm. thing ever it's like it, it was one of those things where for, for that I think it was very much so a sense of like this is going to get picked up because they they don't have any other Content, options really yeah. Well, at the time, not that I knew about it anyway. And um, then now with the other pilot I've done is for Peacock, which is NBC's new streaming service that's coming out in like April next year. Okay. But we're one of the first shows. So like yeah, if, right. if they didn't pick up the show, like they wouldn't they have, would have a, show. a yeah. TV yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. I've been looking in that sense, but I, I, I definitely have heard stories of people kind of being like, fuck this like it's not gonna happen all yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah which is hilarious like, like i heard on the sopranos one of the famous most famous tv programs of all time with some like the greatest acting ever yeah loads of emmys and that's uh, like you don't know if it's gonna like get picked up like it's yeah like, yeah no matter how good the quality is of that first yeah episode, i mean like, like uh christopher montesanti like basically said he could drive and all this shit and he was like oh it doesn't matter like you couldn't drive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just couldn't well, drive. You crashed, you crashed with Lexus. Like. We've all, I think we've all been guilty of maybe exaggerating a little something on our CVs. CVs is like 90% lie. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe stretching the truth a little bit. Have you ever told a casting director that you can do something and you can't really, and you've just completely winged it on an audition or anything like that? Yeah. Like, that happened with you? There was, like back when I first started auditioning, this like, the second or third audition I had ever done. This is like after Sing Street came out, because once we filmed Sing Street and I didn't have an agent, so in that like year to year and a half gap between filming and actually coming out, I didn't do any auditions. So I was just like waiting for Wait it. Waiting for like, something. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, when I started auditioning, the first thing I went up for, or one of the first, was um, 
some English show about, I can't even remember what it was called, it was about potatoes or psychopaths, anyway, and all this kind of stuff. And then uh, they, I think one of the character traits was he's like a really strong swimmer, and I, I can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, I'm I, I flat out on the pillows, like I'm always swimming. <laughs> Throw me in that thing. I'm literally the best swimmer. <laughs> yeah. And then like, I think it was like, I did like one or two callbacks maybe, and it didn't, it didn't go any further, but I was like, maybe this is better that I don't have to come back to them being like, Hello, me, the, the nobody kid you've never heard of. Yeah. I lied to you. <laughs> well, I'm going to need to. Yeah. And that's a pretty big thing to like, it's like, oh yeah, I can play guitar. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. I can sing. Like, you can wing that, but it's like drowning. drowning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike's fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just before we like uh, go, uh, go ahead with the podcast any further, I think that we're not doing movie news this week because we've got a lot to cover in uh, the rest of the podcast, but we can't go by any further this week without mentioning the tragic news about uh, Chadwick Boseman and his passing this week, which is a shock to everyone. A complete shock. I mean, I literally was just saying, I, I was sent the picture into you of the tweet that was like sent out at like one in the morning. Yeah. And it was like... Most like tweet ever. Yeah, which is insane. Mm. And it's like Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman passed away of cancer as well, which mm, was like which is crazy. insane. Oh, yeah. managed Stage to keep four it. bowel cancer. Uh, colon cancer. Colon cancer. And he kept it secret since 2016. And, played, and done Civil War... Civil Avengers, War, Avengers 1 and 2 uh, well like yeah, sorry Endgame Endgame and, yeah, yeah. Uh, Black Panther the movie mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, The Five Bloods uh, The Five Bloods yeah. you also had made Collateral mm-hmm. that action movie was that, yeah. was that what it's called Collateral Collateral yeah um, yeah he was constantly working on, on press stores and stuff mm. but yeah we just felt we had to at least yeah. acknowledge and sorry, just shocking and shocking. We'll definitely, we'll and definitely do an episode in the future yeah definitely and, and just a just a, a sad loss to the entire industry really just it's just the worst as well as I like really no one knew about it at all mm. and I, yeah. I heard rumours that he was losing weight for a role and that's what people were well, thinking yeah, like, yeah, people, yeah. Were, people were speculating because he was on a, I think it was during the lockdown he was on a Instagram live with someone they're saying is he doing something for a role and then is I he, saw a couple of rumours and I was like oh yeah exactly could be yeah, interesting yeah, yeah, and then I just yeah, yeah. It's just crazy to think like uh, how much personal battles some people are out there are, are carrying. Like, and, just no way. And yet he still dedicated himself. So Chadwick Boseman, we, we salute you. Rest, and rest, in, peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Um, but yeah, so on that very sad note, let's let's get back into some more. <laughs> let's, let's get straight back. Let's get straight back into it. And um, I wanted to actually get you to tell the story, Mark, of how you originally were cast in Sing Street because uh, yeah, you're yeah. you're not like. You're not, you're not an actor in the traditional sense where you know you you, you look at America and England. A lot of people train, they, mm. you know, they go to academies, they go to high profile schools. That wasn't your case. Do you want to tell the story about Sing Street? Yeah, I think uh, I think it was just a case of I, I saw something about it on on Facebook and uh, I, I wasn't going to go for it because I was like, there's no way that's going to happen, like kind of thing. And uh, some one of my friends at the time, a girl called Caroline basically just forced me to go she just showed up at my house and she was like get get in the car we're gonna go and all that and then i lined up for like three hours i think at some open audition and uh it was just i went i went in and did like an improv scene i think and it was like two minutes i played i played a song guitar and uh it was just bad like i was like this is you didn't get any good vibe from it or anything i was like this is just weird and then um I think they they asked me about like send them an email of like a picture and like all the instruments I play and stuff and I sent it off and instantly they got back being like we want your artist for Eamon who plays all these instruments and uh, then I went through like three three or four more rounds of auditions at, over the course of a few months and uh, then yeah eventually I just I just got cast apparently the, the way John explains it was uh, there was there was the last round of auditions there uh, I was in the room and he asked me what I thought of being in a movie and uh, I, I, in my head I was like I have to play this cool like, I, yeah. <laughs> and he was like what do you think about being in a movie and I was like yeah it'd be cool. whatever bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like yeah it'd be, be cool like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then he was like alright well uh, we'll be in touch and all and I was like yeah alright whatever yeah, and then yeah. He, uh, the way he tells it though is that my response was I don't care which I, I don't think it was but maybe but it was, you probably gave yeah. off that vibe that it was. Um, but yeah he just said that 
is what made him cast me. The fact that I was like the only kid who came in who wasn't like, like please not, cast not me. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, what was the story with the role of Eamon just taking off? People just loved jumped on the cast. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Like I actually just have no idea what happened. Because <laughs> like, like, like from an Instagram point of view, like your Instagram just skyrocketed compared to yeah. even everyone around you who mm. had even like bigger roles, like mm. like your man Ferdia. What's yeah, Ferdia? Ferdia, 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 Ferdia. Ferdia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, that's just great. Like, what resonated with people so much? Like, I don't. The bunny rabbit. No, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think it's just like, it's just a thing in movies. Like, I I get it too. That there's always because when when the lead character is there, like. The whole movie is spent with this lead character. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, oh, but then there's always that one character that you're like, I want to know this person more, and I think yeah. that's where that mm. attraction comes from. I think from. you're, I think you're buying on with that. Yeah. yeah, he was definitely like Eamon as a character. Eamon could have had his own movie. I How think. are you playing? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm watching Eamon <laughs> spin up. <laughs> I, think, I think there's a. I met I met some guy in in LA once. Dan something. I can't remember his last name now, but. Uh, he was telling me that he tried to like make a Sing Street TV show. Like he tried to get it off the ground. No but way. There's something to do with his schedule and John's schedule it just didn't work out. But I, I was always interested to know what that would have mm. what that would have been. It was like. such, um, did you find that? Did you think the movie was going to be as successful as it was? Because I remember it was it was very much like an Irish movie, and like we've talked about how well it was. You know, Irish in every sense of the word that it had an Irish cast and Irish production behind it and things like that and all but sometimes Irish movies they don't get maybe they don't cross the water they don't really yeah they don't really cross the water but Sing Street very much did oh absolutely yeah, I mean yeah. I, re I was, remember watching American US movie reviewers talking about it and I was like holy shit I can't believe that this guy I went to school with and these, all these people <laughs> talking about this film he's in did you think that it was going <clears> to be as like I mean because it is excellent like you must have known with the script and when it was shooting but did you, did you ever know it's going to be that successful no not really I think it's it's just one of those things of like you like reading it you'll have an image in your head of what's happening and what's what it's going to be like but that you could show up and mm. film it and it's nothing like yeah. that but um yeah I, I i just i have absolutely no idea i think in in america it definitely it, it was a weird one because it did well among like the industry like everyone in the industry saw it and stuff like that but the general public Population, like say, people yeah. who aren't film buffs in america like nobody saw it mm. everyone who's into film saw it though yeah, yeah. So it was one, it was a weird kind of yeah. And it was nominated for quite a lot of awards, didn't it? Did it get the Academy? Yeah. It was at the Golden Globes. It was Golden at the Golden 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 Globes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember thinking, I can't believe it was snubbed for even just yeah. like best best like soundtrack. Sound, or, yeah, I'm, and that was another thing. Can we talk about the soundtrack? It was I came yeah, out the of that film very good. pumping those songs. I remember I was in, in, driving the car home with Paddy, and we were like, "Put on the soundtrack now." That was so <laughs> so yeah. good. Yeah. Like, I, I had to uh, I had to meet up with them. Um, there's a man called Gavin Glass in Dublin who has a studio called Orphan Records and I had to like I had to go to the studio like once or twice a week so I could learn how to play all the songs so I could mime it correctly and all. This is insane, man. This and I remember crazy. when he like he sat me down, he's like, oh, I'm gonna show you all the songs down, he showed me a few and I was like, oh, I can't and then drive like a style account and I was like, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> you, hear so that song, you hear that synth keyboard at the start, you're yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. this song is gonna Because they're they're all written by a, a Scottish man called Gary Clark who was in a band called um uh, Danny Wilson back in like the eighties, I think. But uh, it, yeah, it was just like so. We well, like they were written between him and John, but it was just such a weird thing. Of, I was like, how the fuck are you not so huge? Like, huge, like, like, like yeah, yeah, like mm. writing songs like that. And it's just like sitting. And they're just like, songs yeah, for a movie. Like, they're yeah. songs for a film. Like, it's not even like they're they're singles that are going out. And yeah, out. yeah. Like it's they're designed for the story of the film. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just. Um, yeah, I'm just so fascinated. And how, did, how did your life like shift after Sing Street? Like, uh, yeah, very I, I, enormously, I did. Uh, that, that yeah, time. yeah, but it was it was a very like subtle kind of change. Like I, I I've never like I still view my life how I did when I was yeah like 15 or 16 or whatever. Like I don't. It's 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 not a thing that I consciously think about all the time. Being like oh, like this wouldn't have happened back then and all that kind of stuff. It's just like, it, I think it's it's definitely different when you're, when you're like fortunate enough to be in this position where it's like, you meet all these people, you do all these things and all that, but it's like, it just kind of seems like life when you're doing it. Yeah. yeah like it just feels... Like work it's, almost. It's just happening. Yeah. It's it just, just yeah. seems like this is what's going on. And it makes you kind of maybe lose touch or realize sometimes, but like it's it's 
it's not something that I've sat down and really analysed yeah, properly. But maybe maybe I maybe I should. I don't know. It's, it seems it seems like an intro. Like, right? yeah. yeah. I've yeah. never I've never thought of myself. Right like, the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, next, I wanted to ask you about a film that I've actually watched recently. Uh, it was Overlords, which you were mm. in for the opening scene. And the main the main thing I wanted to ask you was the opening scene. I researched it. And apparently that was all practical effects with with kind of VFX thrown in. Yeah. What was that like to shoot? Because at, at the start of the film, if you've seen it, it's um, a massive. It's like the airborne troop going into like Europe behind Nazi lines, and the plane is basically being shot out of the sky like mid mid. This is practical. Yeah, 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 and and there's like there's probably like twenty guys on the plane, and there's so much happening at one time, and it's really an incredible scene. What was it like filming that? Yeah, that was. That, that was like proper like Hollywood stuff. Like, that was crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. That was like yeah. Uh, a shock compared to Sing Street Life. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like because that was like the second like big job that I'd had since yeah. Sing Street, or the first big job I'd had since Sing Street actually. But um, yeah, we were in like a in a like actual movie studio, like where they where they done scenes from like Superman and Harry Potter and stuff like that. Like they done loads of stuff. Right. It was in like a movie lot in um, in what studio was it? One in one of the big ones in London, it's a Warner Brothers studio, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, they just had this like plane on hydraulics, and it was just <laughs> surrounded by green screen. And then we'd get on the plane, there'd be cameras inside. They had like huge lights outside the window going mad and on. And then uh, I got hooked up with squibs, which are just fake blood packets, yeah, yeah. which are um, terrifying. They they, they are explode. harmless, yeah. but they're they, terrifying. They physically yeah. explode. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the floor was rigged. So certain spots like blew up and like sparks shot up and stuff and they're like it, it's not gonna hurt and all that. it's gonna be fine. I was like, all right, let's like, <laughs> <laughs> watch what I step like that. But, uh, then we I had to like work out a thing with the guy triggering it where it's like I'll take this many steps and I'll land at this point. Don't step on here. Don't step on there. And I was like, all right. You're fucking tired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it took like thirty minutes to put the scripts on. So they were like, please do this in one shot. Like, like yeah. yeah. And. Uh, then the first shot they were like when it blows up like it's not gonna hurt you like it's fine just don't panic and i was like all right blew up and i'm supposed to like be getting shot so like i i, I was like oh i yeah, got shot yeah, like yeah. and then uh, the floor a piece of it shot up and it was coming from my face and i like put my hand out to block it and it like smacked my hand and it like it didn't burn bad to this part like to the sense where i was like oh, i need to Put cold water on my hand, like I burnt yeah. my hand off. But uh, you felt it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was burnt. Like, yeah. yeah, and then uh, I, I was like, yeah, that hurt, like that. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the, the Hollywood. You'll be a star, And then uh, the guy, the guy's face is like, all right, we'll do it again. The floor is not gonna blow up this time. You're just the scribes are gonna blow up. And I was like, all right. And then he was like, we'll do it one more time because your hand got in front of your face. And I was like, well. I was blocking, blocking a piece from, of shrapnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hitting my face. I mean, uh, you were getting shot as well. Yeah, yeah. You know? And uh, then I spent like another 30 minutes putting screws on, which is a, a very boring thing to do. You mm. just kind of stand in a like, T pose while some guy just puts fake blood all over him. But um, yeah, and then the second time we did it, we, we, we got it and the floor didn't blow up and it was a lot easier. But it was the kind of thing where I was like, on this plane, there's a lot of stunt doubles. It was the first time I'd ever seen stunt doubles like really commit to something. Yeah. It was actually the first time I saw stunt doubles. Right? Actually, yeah. Right? Yeah, like there was no, there was no stunt doubles on Century. So it was actually stunt doubles. <laughs> <laughs> stunt doubles. But, um, yeah, then they were like, so what's your character's name again? And I was like, oh, it's Murphy. And they were like, all right, cool. And then I died and they were all like, Murphy. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are getting in. Yeah, they're like, going like, for it here. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, they're going to. It was showing me, like, yeah. bit, <laughs> and I'm like dead on the floor, yeah. and obviously I'm dead. I can't move. People are, like jumping on top of me, and I was like, my leg is going to snap. <laughs> like it's going to snap. And then they just call cut, and the director was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's there." And I was like, "Thank, thank, thank God, God, because I'm man. not, not putting those screams on again." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So th does that turn you off then? So like Wayne is full of action, like yeah, and you had to do training and stuff for that. Mm. And all. That was was that daunting taking on a role where it was like. Okay, first of all, there's the added pressure of, you know, having to be the main character in a TV show. But then also you have to be like doing choreographed scenes with like, I mean, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it wasn't as 
bad as people would imagine because it wasn't as like extreme. It was just kind of, it was just fun. Like we had a our stunt coordinator was a was a man named Neil who was like the nicest man in the world. Like really short, stocky guy. He does loads of gymnastics. He like terrifying. He like <laughs> he probably knows some fight moves that he can't show me but yeah he just like we we i'd have days where like i'd meet up with him and the other people on stunt team we'd like practice the fight scenes if there was like a day where where we had lunch and i wasn't needed for the next scene i'd like go into him during lunch and we'd practice scene and all that but uh yeah it was just fun i had to like i had to learn how to ride a motorbike and stuff like that <laughs> and then like that's pretty chill there's there's one point where i was i was on the motorbike <laughs> And he was like, you have to learn how to skate. And I was like, hey, you do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he, we found like an empty car park. And there was like a bit of like gravel. And he was like, right, come like flying up towards this. I'm going to put a cone down. You're going to skate up to the cone. And I was like, no, I'm not, man. I'm going to like die. Yeah, yeah. And he said, oh, no, you can do it. So I like, <laughs> went on the bike. And I was like, I'm going so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Did the skate destroyed the cone and I was like oh that was so cool I watched the video back I was so slow like, <laughs> like, 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 like you gotta run beside me like, <laughs> it was so and I was like on the bike like shitting myself like, yeah. <laughs> holding on for dear life yeah, like, yeah. and how does like the treatment differ when you're obviously you went from you went from being like a, a supporting character then kind of like an, an extra role and then now you're the protagonist of a show like how does that how does that shit like i think i think for me anyway it's just like you just get more attention from the director or producers because like they have to tell you what to do of course yeah, yeah, yeah. like i think that's for me that was really it like there's no no added pressure or none that you felt not for me anyway but i, I was very close friends with like the writer and the directors and stuff like that so but um there's there's definitely a pressure at times if like if you're on like your fourth or fifth take of a scene and you're like fuck's like what am i doing wrong here yeah. kind of thing yeah but uh yeah i think it was just just a case of like like there's no there's no attitude shift really well, like, course, yeah. and i feel i feel like that also comes down to that like that stuff trickles down from the top like it's because sean uh, the writer he it's like one of the greatest people i've ever met so for him being on set all the time and being so like nice to everyone being so calm and always making jokes and stuff it just made the set feel like nice it made like it feel warmer, easy yeah. like there was no kind of it's not that boss worker yeah there, there was no it's sense like of like you're gonna do this do that like, yeah. why can't you get it? it was just very like oh you can get it i'll take we're maybe all, yeah, take your time together yeah yeah you can tell that in the show though like when you're watching the show it feels fun it feels like everyone's it's like, got a real kind fun. of homey sense to it like a homely kind of like these guys are having a fucking great time, time. yeah, yeah it, it was time. it was very same kind of vibes as sing street like sing street just, it's like it like it's like, like a home having a blast. sing street is a home-baked movie you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, you're walking like through country fields and then like like there's a little like uh, American Pie, and then, <laughs> and then, like your granny turns around and is like I have Sing Street on. <laughs> I think there's a huge difference, of, like because with Sing Street, like none of us are like none of us are actors. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, we're just kind of like just group of lads like making jokes all the time, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. constantly slagging each other, like saying some outrageous shit to each other, like and then like they call action and everyone just stops. Stop. Yeah. 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 And then it was just like a lot of lads hanging out and then you move on to your next job and it's like like I went on to Overlord and I was with like actual actors. Which is yeah, wild wild yeah, also, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Really Richie, even yeah. though that's his that's not his I I, I remember as well meeting him, uh Jacob Anderson, like yeah, he yeah, that's his actual, it's name. actual name. Yeah. <laughs> he, my one of my good friends, his favourite rapper is Valerie Richie, and I was like Yeah, oh, okay, cool, like I had no idea who Valerie Richie was and I met Jacob and I was like I, I know I know yeah. from somewhere I was hanging out with him for like four days and then someone was like oh here's the music going and we were at like the craft table I wasn't involved in this conversation someone came up and was like here's the music going and to myself I just went I fucking knew it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like oh <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sorry. well there was a load of Game of Thrones stars on Overlord I was, I was noticing like you're on Greyjoys in it mm, and yeah, yeah there's a few people but then, but then like I, I moved on to like Wayne where I was more involved and like I was working with Sierra, who's been, I mean, doing this since she was like a twelve. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't he good? Isn't she? Uh, Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I, I, I hadn't 
really known her that well at this point. I didn't know anyone that well at this point. And we'd like show up and do scenes and all. And I was like, she's she was so phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Way, wasn't she? She's so oh, real. Good, like, and I was like, how did how did that feel then when it's like you've got someone who's been in it for years and they're showing up on set and like did it seem like oh she just knows what she's doing i just i just had to accept it like, I, was <laughs> just, like I was just like she's just far more yeah, professional yeah, than, than yeah. i am like i i walk around like insulting producers like, and they'd be like oh, <laughs> Mark, uh, and i'm like go over to the writer and just like say the stupidest shit and it was just like one of those things where i just it clicked with me one day where i was like <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should take this down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And like me, me and the cameraman like had this joke that we just hated each other. Like I don't even know where it came from. Like it just went. It was real. Yeah. <laughs> but, like I'm actually like very good friends with like, I, I, I hang out with them like off set on weekends and stuff. And then we go to work and it was just like a oh, few. Like. <laughs> and I mean, like aside from everything else, like, you shot in Toronto, didn't you? Yeah. What was it like just living in Canada for the duration? Of All right, it's like. The greatest city in the world. Man. Thank yeah. you. So, Someone else who agrees. Yeah, I've heard to go to Toronto. Yeah. I, I heard it's like Vancouver. underground New York, like slightly. It literally, like it's level. it's it's just like safe, <laughs> clean New York. Yeah, with lots of fucking. Yeah, they're, yeah. <laughs> they're also like they're also I, I felt Torontonians as they call themselves. Sounder. They're they're very chill and they're just like there's no there's no pretense with them at all. Like mm. I just found there and they're you know what I love about them? They're big into their underground music. Like they love, yeah, yeah, yeah. consume so much music over there. People from Vancouver like, are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm generalizing you guys. Yeah. I, I, I did a, the other pilot I did in November in Vancouver, which is also a very good city, but uh, I didn't get to know it as well. I, I only have like two friends in Vancouver, but like in Toronto, actually, I probably don't even have that many friends in Toronto either, but yeah. I, I lived there for like three to four months. And it was like, like I, I was in a Kensington Market, which is the greatest place, like ever. the trendy kind of temple bar area. It's so fun. And I was like, there was like this, this jazz club, like right around the corner from my apartment. And I was like, I, I need to go there one night. And it was never open. I was like, how the fuck do I get into this place? Like, is it just shut down? And my last week, someone was like, oh yeah, you knock. And you give a password and this is the password. And I was like, where were you on my first week? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't spend the whole summer in yeah, this jazz yeah. bar. Yeah, it, looked like, it was one of those places that like, I'm sure... It's a very specific type of person who goes there. Probably yeah, arseholes. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I just wanted to go in just once. And did you get in? Did you ever get no. in? No. Oh. I, I need to go back. Oh, oh you need to go back. <laughs> I'm just, the I'm like, changed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> since then, I've just spent my life looking for excuses to go back to Toronto. Like, if, if it made sense for me in my career and stuff, I'd to move go. there tomorrow. Yeah. Like, well, well, here's a question for you. Is it a, when I was there, I worked for um, City Sightseeing, you know, those little, <laughs> those, uh, I hope you did the tour while you were over there. Uh, yeah. I actually think I did. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, so I ended up like there in love with the city and stuff. And the big thing is that they shoot loads of things there because it's cheaper to shoot in Toronto. You get all these breaks and they make it look like New York and stuff. Yeah. They shot like American Psycho. Yeah, Vancouver's very similar. It's like Yeah, yeah. Stuff, yeah. You know? And they shoot the boys there, that Amazon series that we haven't shown there for the last few weeks. They also shoot and they've shot so many things that suits and stuff as well. Does it strike is it did you get any whisperings of like this is a city that you could make a, a living if you wanted to be in like the acting business there or is it always like LA, LA and New York? It feels like I think it's a very like LA, LA, LA thing, and then New York is like, like either you'd want to have grown up there or you'd want to just be like, kind of well established already. Okay, yeah. But because like, I uh, everyone I spoke to, I like I love New York as a city, and I would move there like over any place in the world. And then there's been everyone I talk to, I'm like, what like between LA and New York, like what makes more sense and all that, and they're always like, just go to LA because if you go to New York, like. Uh, any audition like all my auditions now are on tape because obviously I'm in Dublin like yeah, and yeah. they were just like yeah if you go to New York like nothing's gonna change like if you get an audition it's probably gonna be about three hours away from wherever you live so like you just have to go to LA you have to go to LA but like New York's full of indie movies like all, all the kind of like the cooler movies so, which yeah, is like the kind of yeah. stuff I, I would like to get into but it's like I think I, I could be wrong but I think it's more a sense of like you can either be unknown and do an indie movie that will probably be very good but won't get the right but nobody will see it or you could be well established and do a very cool indie movie that everyone yeah. will be talking like Uncle James or yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah and like and that's I, I suppose that's kind of the 
the struggle with the the industry because I mean, we discussed this when we were talking about um, Marriage Story. I thought it depicted the difference between LA and New York really well. Where it's like it's, well. it seems to be the vibe in New York is kind of like um, stu- studied actors, people who have who have gone through college and, and really theater. yeah theater yeah. and stuff like that, and it really drinks it in. And then it's like LA is where they make all the Marvel movies, and it's like that's where people are you know gets, yeah. get, the movies that come out of LA get asses and seats. New York, yeah. Mike went with. You can look at it in Adam Sandler's career, okay? This is a bit though. Jack is literally holding waiting, up a yeah, graph yeah, right now. Yeah. <laughs> New York is those Adam Sandler movies where he tries to fucking like um, act like an actual actor. Look, I love him. I love him. He's great. But <laughs> it's like Uncle Gems and then like. Those yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah, LA yeah. is Jack and Joe. It's <laughs> right. Yeah. And then like the Midwest is funny people. That's a good look. This needs to be drawn up. Yeah. Yeah. We will be posting a picture of Jack's out of the yeah. ground on Instagram during the week. But uh, last thing I wanted to ask you, Mark, just before we move on to our movie scandals. Uh, which is the topic of the podcast that like, we didn't we didn't actually mention that is uh, we're, oh, yeah, we're all yeah. going to I don't think anyone's actually listening for the scandals they're going to be listening yeah. for <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah but we're, we're going to be doing uh, movie scandals and, and stuff that happened on, on sets of films that just definitely shouldn't have happened but um, the passing on that is there any story on Wayne season 2 uh, not that I know of anyway I, I, I feel well, I've heard anyway that they're still trying places but i haven't been up there well anyway. what i was thinking about that was i saw that you the netflix series actually started out on showtime yeah and mm. uh there's another series that recently, cobra, kai. Uh, cobra kai is on netflix, on netflix now. Mm. So has there ever been any discussion about wayne getting picked up by another not even picked up but like even shown like i mean i, I feel like if wayne you just bought a license to it basically so yeah, yeah like i mean I, like I, like do you think that could be an option that if a new streaming service gets it, breathes new life into it? I'm just hoping that, because I, I know that they're still trying, I just don't know what's happening, but I, my hope is that, like, things like COVID and stuff like that, everything that's going on, mm. since there's no shows being filmed, okay, nothing's being yeah, made, yeah. Right, I'm just hoping that someone's going to be like, here, fuck it, we'll it's take it. Stuff, it's like established yeah. property, like, yeah, yeah. 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 They, like, like, they call it, like, gent- gently used, I think is the term. Oh, okay. But it's like, okay. it was, it was kind of seen, but it's not like everybody yeah. has seen it. Well, it was just yeah. a platform, isn't it? That, because the, the show itself, it came I too early. I, I, I fell in love with YouTube the show, like, really, really getting up and, now, like. Yeah, and, like, yeah, the yeah, thing about it is, like, you did a full season there that you guys are, could be so proud of, and, like, it hit all the right benchmarks. I don't see why it, shouldn't you know what yeah. i mean like, well, i don't like, know why cobra kai got because because for me they were both on the same level obviously cobra kai had that like nostalgia and that, the, and that, yeah. and that base before a, ba- a brand then, that's been yeah. established but i thought the two of them shows really went hand in hand and setting the tone for youtube premium. yeah it's yeah. just like a really entertaining but engaging way you know yeah i thought it was kind of going to be like it kind of like reminds me of the boys yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. like that kind of like like Netflix is so fucking cookie cutter now. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I actually have a huge agenda against Netflix these days because I've said it in the podcast last week. I've talked about it in full. Mm-hmm. I'm just kind of sick of their fucking bullshit with their TV shows, yeah. not taking yeah. any risks anymore. Um, but yeah, like I really got that vibe off of both Cobra Kai no and what I watched and Wayne, like very different kind of like. Like the same way Chris Brunel had like indie blockbusters, they were kind of like indie kind of different quirks. Yeah, with the same way as like the end of the fucking world, like, you know? like the end of the fucking world, world, world fit in very similar to, with very that, similar like, to Wayne. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought Wayne was a lot less kind of like it wasn't as much of a pussy as the end of the fucking world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Wait, man, your man is a big I, pussy in that. I just hope what happens for like Sean, the the writer, because like Ooh. he had like three seasons of this show written like written. he knows where it's gonna go like and he's that's what he wants he's like, like a mm. fucking genius when it comes to writing like, he has so many other ideas for shows and stuff but like just him as a person and the way he looks at life in general and how he how he writes he's so funny he's so smart like he just knows how to make characters feel like people and not characters like he, he knows how to make it seem like these people exist and what you're watching is like happening in the world mm. and you're but just it's so seeing strange it because like i felt like wayne was kind of like larger than life whereas like the other characters around him they all just like built on each other so well and like made each other's characters like i don't think wayne without dell yeah would have been as good and i don't think dell without wayne would have been as good like but like he does he just does this thing of like sean just does this thing of like um 
like all these characters have such weird like Quirks. traits. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's seriously stylized. And I think it's just way. because like that's this is what people are like. Yeah. Like you might mm. like meet Life, them. Yeah. Or yeah. And, like you'll meet them and they might be like, hey, I. I have tattoos all over me because I was in prison in Taiwan or something. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it's just the kind of thing that like that was incredible. That's, yeah. that's just like what people are like, and yeah. it's the, I think it's from what I've seen. I mean, one of the first examples of a show being like this is how fucking weird people can be yeah. instead of just being yeah. like yeah. It, it embraced the. The, the chaos. The chaos. Yeah. Instead, instead of just being like, yeah. here's the best friend. Yeah. yeah. You don't know oh, where he was the night before. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Everyone's got their. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, you don't actually know fucking anyone. Like, it, it broke yeah. a lot of character tropes. Yeah. 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 It did. Even in real life, like, you don't know fucking anyone. Like, exactly. I don't know what's in your brain. Even. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you could be fucking outside my window. I'm playing your murder right now, Jack. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I mean, Jesus, I mean, I could just talk about I your know. experience in the industry all day, man. I, I, but we burn the ears off you when we see it's, you. It's so okay. I, I want to I wanna say this, that it's it's so strange how not jealous I am of you just because how grounded you've remained. Yeah, like, it literally <laughs> just feel like I'm talking to you like I was yeah. in school. Like, yeah. you know, if you were a prick, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's a huge compliment. <laughs> <laughs> No, it is. If like when it, when you look back at like your school friends and like who who would you want to get famous? Like it's never the person who's going to let it go to their head. Yeah, and yeah, you exactly, certainly weren't. Yeah. You know, I mean, like and uh, yeah, like I mean, I like I was literally just saying to him. I've I've said this to him so many times, but I remember when he I bumped into you at the bus stop. Uh, I was coming home from work and uh, we were just chatting and uh, I was like, oh, how did that uh, audition thing go? And you're like, oh, you're like, they told me three weeks ago. I find out in three weeks. And you're like, it's been three weeks. I don't think I have it. And then like, I, I think I bumped into you like a couple of days later and you're like, oh yeah, I got it. And like, <laughs> and, like that was just it then. And now it's like, now I'm talking to you mm. from this home. And as and you say, it, like, it's, yeah. it's subtly happened. It's just kind of yeah. gradually happened. You're, you're, you know what was so funny? Sorry to interrupt, but no, what was so funny? You'll know, you'll remember this as well, Ian. Is uh, so when we were back in school, we all did this talent show, and basically for the talent show, you write scripts and you, and you film scri- uh, skits, basically. Yeah. And uh, we'd all sat down, and, and Mark was involved, and uh, he he was we we didn't even think anything of it. We were like well, like like what's his acting skill going to bring to a bunch of fucking skits? <laughs> <laughs> we did this scene where there was like three like fake cops. And we went one by one around the fake cops and Mark was the last oh, one. <laughs> and, and we were fucking... We, we, oh, the two other lads were struggling. Like, their first time in front of the camera, anyone would be, like, fucking basically doing their lines or whatever. And then Mark gets it and he just knocks it out of the fucking <laughs> <laughs> And we were just like, whoa. We were just like, oh, we were just like Jesus. There's <laughs> one scene in that, in that uh, video where, it, like... I, th- I think we were just standing there blocking someone. And I, blocking I laughed. Me. You were blocking me yeah. from the stairs. I, I, I just laughed. Like, <laughs> okay, that's, yeah. that's your first credit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Be, like, yeah. But I, I watched it back. Like I watched it back, and I was just like, I know it's just like a video of school. I was like, fucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I mean, the the famous death scene at the end of that. One. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that was a that was a really that, point, that was our right? magnum opus. That yeah, was our, that, like, was, that was certainly my magnum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some of your fans like find it. I, I, I don't know. Well, well I, did, I know, I know, I know that yeah. prefects, well, like, this is, sorry, I should give a bit of context. We shot this and showed it to our school, and it's just a thing that we used can, to do. You can find it on YouTube. You can find it on YouTube, YouTube. <laughs> you can look it up. But um, it now has thousands of views on, on YouTube. Like, like it does have <laughs> loads of does views that? compared to the other ones. <laughs> so... Your fans saw it somewhere, fam. Yeah, and like, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and there's all like Russian comments yeah. under it. Oh, Sorry, no. it <laughs> we, we've all gotten text messages asking <laughs> to give you letters, okay? <laughs> um, what was it? What was, sorry, just because like we're, we're only going to get to do this once. What was the story with like the first time that like you were you were stopped or recognized or like you had like weird people messaging you? Uh, I, I no, actually witnessed it once as well. It, it's, it's just, I, I think getting recognized for me <clears throat> is like one of the most awkward things in the world like i just it must be crap it's it's it not like be, it's not well not crap but like, it's not crap because it's like i i, I like I, I know if i was in this position i met someone who i was like cool i'd be like oh can i get a picture and stuff but like it's just like they're like oh can i get a picture and you're like yeah well like someone some people and they could be like can i get a picture and you're like yeah cool and then like 
they get their phone here, their camera, and then their friend is like, oh, sorry, turn the camera off, and I just have to fucking stand there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, no, no, yeah, will you turn this, and they're having a whole thing, and I'm just like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and also, like, I mean, it must be hard, because, like, sometimes, like, you just aren't in the mood to deal with yeah. it. Like, yeah. just in general. Imagine being insanely hungover. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, no, I remember there was one on guy. On the 42, like, like. One guy on, like, Grafton Street or something, was like, I was walking past him, and he was having a conversation with someone, and he, like, like just cut the conversation, turns around and goes, Mark, can I mention, uh, yeah. And I, I, I thought like I'd met him before. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he just goes, I love seeing you. Have a good day. And I was like, I want to meet that guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, I'm your fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, this is weird. When uh, me and my friend were in Vancouver, we were in a river island. And Aiden Gillen walked by. <laughs> well, by you were, because Aiden Gillen walked by us. And he looked at us and, he, and we, were, we looked at him and he goes, all right, and we were like, "How are you?" <laughs> and he goes, "What are you doing here?" And we were like, "Nothing." <laughs> no, that's because a friend who had seen him had met him like <laughs> three months before. Yeah. He's in Dublin. In Dublin, yeah. in Vancouver. He's like, "Hello." <laughs> <laughs> you see the fuck away. <laughs> My wife and kids are here. <laughs> this is funny, you little fuck. <laughs> I'm even fucking killing him. <laughs> It's, it's like, especially because Aiden is such like a very nice but very quiet reserved guy. Oh, he's a very quiet fella, absolutely. Is it? It's one of those. It's just always. It could be for a lot of people. I don't know, but certainly for me anyway. I'm definitely like not. Like I'm very grateful that there's people who who see me in this way. That's like, oh, I should get a picture with this guy. And like, mm-hmm. I'm grateful that like people feel the need that they should talk to me about this or stop me in the street. And uh, it's a very privileged position to be in, but at the same time, that like does not cure the anxiety it gives me. Like I, yeah. I'm so <laughs> afraid of like looking like an idiot or like having them just like question my intelligence or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good way to put it because I feel like a lot of people think that like celebrities or or just actors in general, like people you recognize, they kind of owe the you yeah. the random stranger to, to be like to be like full person. of personality yeah, yeah like, full like, of like oh hey engaged. random guy yeah i'm just like yeah. a tv I, I, show it's the, it's, the, it's the my my thing of my experience is i've met a few celebrities actually i've met oh, okay. I, I met two massive rock stars in the 90s both while i was out of the country right i met billy joe armstrong in toronto in That's a thrift really cool. store right which was thrift store. that was huge for Did me like father? no he looked exhausted <laughs> <laughs> he looked so tired um, but I chatted away with him, he was a nice guy, and then I also saw the next year, oh no, it was two years later, uh, Billy Corgan, uh, when I was in Bulgaria, <laughs> and we went to see Dracula's castle, and Billy Corgan was there. On was the he Dracula? Like... Like, I mean, he didn't look that different to Dracula, but I was just like, this is so fucking weird, I've seen two massive rock yeah, stars. Yeah, like, that's like one one in a million there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, insane, yeah. and both times when I was not in my country, like I was in yeah. Canada, mm. and... Uh, but my experience of it was when I was talking to Bajor, and like, I was glad I met him when I was like 20. If I met him when I was 16, I would have been losing my fucking Flipped mind. Out, yeah. Like he was like, Green Day were my fucking shit. Like, mm, but right. I, I had, I said, I can't knock up and, and say hi to him. Like, mm. And uh, it's like, you're so excited to see this person and they're not ex- yeah, excited, excited to see, to see you. you because they don't, <laughs> they don't know who the hell you are. You're just some mm. guy on the, on the street. And I think maybe that's what it comes across when people are like oh you know an actor might have acted a certain way yeah. in front of you it's like you can't expect someone to be <laughs> yeah. enthusiastic yeah, all yeah, the time yeah, yeah. I do like... enjoy the breakdowns when celebrities just go fucking mad <laughs> <laughs> Shia LaBeouf yeah. is the yeah. Shia, Shia LaBeouf is a genius yeah. I have nothing bad oh, said against Shia LaBeouf <laughs> has a fucking we are a big fan of yeah. yeah. podcast yeah. Tune has a uh, metal bars in the shoulder because of Shia LaBeouf yeah I stayed up one night super late watching now uh, I was in Vietnam and we were watching we said we'd go to bed early because we wanted to go out and do a big tour the next day so uh, we went to bed early ended up going to sleep at like 6 in the morning because we all sat around watching videos of Shia LaBeouf freaking out <laughs> <laughs> and the next morning missed our tour said we were going to do it the next day didn't drink that night I ended up getting a sober moped ride home and uh Ended up in a crash, <laughs> broke my shoulder bone because I chose to stay up late watching videos of Shia LaBeouf. Actually, worth it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have no regrets. Who's the most famous person you've ever met? Um, I, I mean, I, I was on like this set of Game of Thrones, so I kind of saw all of them. 
and uh, I played Jason Momoa quiche that's my claim to fame but that, that's kind of it like <laughs> very sensual I know yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's kind did of you actually different. physically put it in his mouth no but I, I no but he didn't eat the crust so and he left it like kind of like in my hand it was kind of weird <laughs> and, uh, I, I gave it to the next person and I was like Jason Momoa ate the other half of this and they were like yes and I, like, <laughs> and I, I like fed it to them <laughs> So yeah, it did, it, that quiche kind of got around, but yeah. Um, so will we move on to the actual topic of this podcast for the moment and have a, have a little bit of fun? Right? Yeah, we'll, we'll do like we'll, we'll get into the scandals. I, I think the yeah. scandals is a good idea. Yeah. Who wants to go first? I think Mark. Do you have any scandals from, from actual set that you would like to talk about? Uh, Obviously, like waivers, no disclosure, <laughs> yeah, not anything, nothing like, that's going to lose you work. You know, no, you nothing, say. nothing too too crazy. The only one I can think of is um, it was. It was not like extreme in terms of the production but it was extreme in terms of the person but it was like uh i'm not going to say who it was what project it was it wasn't an actor in the end but um or producer or director or anything like that uh it was just this person who worked in the crew and was quite high up in the crew so they could kind of can you say decisions. can you say like what you were on like no no i'm not, I'm not really. <laughs> but uh they, it was just someone who was high up in the crew and they were like kind of giving other people instructions of what they should be doing and stuff and uh, then it turned out that they were just like threatening everyone and like actually threatening them and like we met like if I fucked up a shot or if someone else fucked up a shot he'd go up to someone in the crew make and be like threat. that was your fault you fucked that up like wow. and just make them feel terrible and then I, th I think like I think they, they went up to someone and like like threaten their family or something oh like that. Oh my god! It was like hell? after like two weeks, they they had to get fired. So it was that was like the only crazy experience I've ever had. It was like this brings up a good thing because it's like everyone kind of has like office scandals. Like I, I, everyone has office scandals. Office everyone has some drama yeah. in their yeah in their office. But it like for you, it's like on set of a production. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's everywhere, but it's I mean, it's it's crazy. But um, do do you want do you want to Talk about yours first, Mark. Do you have one in mind? Yeah, I have a pretty crazy movie that I did a bit of research on. Uh, I'll just get the notes out here because I'm very professional. Oh, That's right. We, yeah. we make our celebrities bring notes to our <laughs> see, <laughs> see, I have I have a list of like multiple movies where things went wrong. Jesus Christ. Like, That's long though. Can, can, can you just like, point that? Like, oh my God. <laughs> I, like, I love this show. Show. This is amazing. Like, I love looking up this stuff. But there's one movie in specific, which is Apocalypse Now, mm -hmm. which just seems like an absolute fucking nightmare of a movie. So basically, um, if you haven't seen Apocalypse Now, uh, it's just about a US Army uh, sergeant who has to go to Vietnam because there's another... I think he's another sergeant who's kind of gone gone AWOL or missing yeah or and they have to assassinate him basically Brown Brown Brown. yeah yeah so essentially right I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off low battery mode here so my my phone doesn't croak at me. <laughs> <laughs> but um so it was directed by uh, Francois Coppola 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 head of people Coppola Cop <laughs> whatever we are the worst just, for, for yeah. pronouncing names just yeah. know that for the rest of the podcast whenever I say his name I'm gonna be thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Say it different every time. Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna change his name, new director every time. But uh, <laughs> so originally, Harry Keitel was cast as the lead as uh, Martin Sheen. Oh, oh wait, I never knew that's that. very interesting. They got two weeks into filming, and him and Coppola disagreed with how he was portraying the character, so they fired him and hired Martin Sheen instead. Okay. So this is two weeks into filming, right? Martin Sheen shows up. He's on set. He's like, what's up? I'm on set. They're like, hey, Martin Sheen. Typhoon hits. <laughs> 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 Destroys the set. Oh, fuck oh like, destroyed God. it. Oh, Everyone got sent home. They had to rebuild the set, which cost millions. Mm -hmm. Millions, yeah. Put them way over budget. Put them weeks behind schedule. And some of the crew, when they were coming back, the crew just didn't come back. <laughs> they just stayed on the <laughs> <laughs> They just didn't want to go back to it. <laughs> Uh, what else was there? There was after the typhoon, then millions over budget. Yeah, I love the, the tick off list. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's, there's too much for me to remember. Um, okay, so then shooting came back. The set was rebuilt. Marlon Brando finally shows up, horribly <laughs> overweight. <laughs> 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 the character in the book that is based off uh, Heart of Darkness 
the character is constantly described as being tall and very, very thin. <laughs> and Marlon Brando, I think they have a picture of him in the movie to be like, this is the person, and he looks like Marlon Brando. He showed up and he did not look like Marlon Brando. <laughs> very overweight. And he then admitted that he'd never read Heart of Darkness, which is the book the movie's based off. I've read Heart of Darkness, weirdly enough. He, he hadn't read the script of the movie either. Oh my God. But, um... I thought Heart of Darkness was about a boat. It's a it's a it's a base on it. It's, it's just like a, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's loosely based. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, but uh, yeah. So Marlon, that's funny. I never knew that. Or, uh, Marlon Brando hadn't read either, and um, <laughs> then whenever they shot his scenes, <laughs> whenever they shot his scenes, they had to shoot them in, in darkness so you couldn't see how overweight he was. <laughs> Fucking hell! Oh just turn off the lights. <laughs> no one will see how fat Brando is. But, but, uh, do you still, like remember when you first watched that? Yeah, it's I, so I, close. I, I, I mean, everyone was like, Modern Man was so good in this. And I was like, yeah, if I could fucking see it. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about him being so good is he hadn't read the script and he refused to read it. He refused to learn his lines. I think he read some of it and he said he didn't like it. So he's like, I'm not learning it. So they, they had to resort to just filming him. And see what he does. And see, I'm hoping they could it's use it. It's a character it. study. <laughs> Literally, they had to just... See what came out of him. See what he does. Watch, watch Fat Marlon Brando <laughs> so he loses his mind the tycoon. And then the fact that he was doing this meant that C- Coppola had to rewrite scenes every day on set. Oh, God. To oh, suit what he like, was doing. That sounds like most stressful thing. You, you, Marlon Brando seemed like a bit of an arsehole. Remember he sent that Native American girl to up to collect his Oscar yeah yeah and he made her make this speech about like how like badly they had it and everything and everyone was just like fucking hell Marilyn like to be fair though I watched that back recently and I was like he's kind of ahead of his time with that ahead of his time yeah. I mean ahead of his like, time with that. look yeah of course like they, they need representation but I just thought like place of the time Marilyn like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> also as well as uh, just a random Marilyn Brando fact here he was meant to play Vito Corleone in Godfather 2 but he has a he had a rule where he'll never play the same character twice. Okay. So they got Robert De Niro in to play Vito Corleone in The Godfather 2, a young... Oh, Because he, he wasn't that old when they shot the first Godfather. They made him look a lot older. I think yeah. he was in his 40s, and they thought, well, well, you can play a young Vito. You'll get away with it. And he was like, no. I wonder, like, that Harvey Keitel thing, he was the lead in uh, Mean Streets that Mary Scorsese Yeah, Mean from. Streets, yeah. And Francis Ford Coppola, I'm just saying Coppola, <laughs> <laughs> he, he funded that very, really heavily. And I wonder, did like he get Harvey Keitel from that film, and then he just turned out to be an arsehole? Because I actually think Harvey Keitel has a pretty kind of okayish resume. He does. He Even has a very good resume. He, he, he's like a, a great actor, but I, I don't think he ever like really hit the heights that he should have. Well, he, I think he's very selective in his films. Uh, apparently, yeah. in this movie, after he left, he had like an eight movie deal contract with the studio, and whatever happened must have been so bad so that right. he literally that he ripped impact. up the contract like that's that's, oh. that's a lot of fucking money like yeah yeah because yeah, 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 yeah. honestly from mean streets like onward for like a, 10 years there was like, nothing, it was, like uh, very little like yeah because i suppose he was a bit older in pulp fiction and yeah he like was yeah, and reservoir dogs yeah. obviously and those are small movies like yeah they to be in like yeah um but go on i want to hear more about this shit show there's there's <laughs> so much more as well they they had um american attack helicopters that uh they they couldn't get real ones from America, so they wherever they were filming, I think they actually filmed in Vietnam, maybe. Yeah, I think it was the Philippines. Philippines, yeah. they had a uh, American helicopters there, and they would borrow them to film. But <laughs> there was an actual civil war going on. Why <laughs> 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 they filmed the movie? <laughs> so, Why didn't they just go to fucking Vietnam? <laughs> so they would, uh, <laughs> they would be in the middle of filming a scene, and the helicopters would just have to go leave to bomb somebody. <laughs> Oh my God, this is insane. It's got like murder village. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what else was there? The the, ca- the cast and crew both had like terrible issues with drugs, alcohol, and there's a lot of disease going around. Oh, I'd, I'd imagine dysentery was yeah. just yeah. rife. Like, like typhoid. Like. Yeah. Um, there was there's a security guard that got hired because uh, they had such a bad drug problem that when they went over budget, they were given weekly salaries instead. Oh my god. And the weekly salary mysteriously disappeared one week and a lot of drugs then appeared. <laughs> <laughs> and then they had to hire a security guard to just watch the money to oh make sure god. nobody was taking it. Well this was back in the eighties when they had cocaine budgets in movies yeah, as well. So yeah. yeah. Which the next fact <laughs> <laughs> So Dennis Hopper was having trouble getting into character and uh Coppola came up to him on set and was like, like what 
do you need? Like, how can I help you get into character? And he said, about, about an ounce of cocaine should do that. <laughs> and uh, he gave him an ounce of cocaine. And oh, apparently, no. if you watch the movie, apparently Dennis Hopper is like... Oh, cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Very coked up in all oh, of the scenes. Uh, which then, Marlon Brando saw this and was like, this is disgusting, you're hor- horribly unprofessional. It was very funny. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Marlon Brando. The man shows up yeah. overweight. Yeah. It's like, then, um, it's very unprofessional of you. Marlon Brando. Fuck Marlon Brando. Refusing to read the script. I can't believe you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> super skinny, well, coked up Dennis Hopper. <laughs> a massive fucking Marlon Brando. I don't know. Was that, was that in the script? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> You're ruining the movie. <laughs> <laughs> what I think it is. You're ruining it for everyone. <laughs> this man had to be on coke. No. That would be special. You have a burger in your hand. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> then, um, uh, so basically, they, they constantly argue. Man, I'm brown, and I'm And they got to the point where um, they couldn't, they had a lot of scenes together. They couldn't film them together. So they. <laughs> So they filmed the scene separately and then edited them together. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. It's, it's like the side by side things where you like you don't move the camera and you like, <laughs> change your top. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, then Marlon Brando and uh Fast for a couple of seconds and the huge arguments they got to a point where um, whenever Brando had a scene, Cobbler would have to hand it off to his assistant to be like, You have to direct this because I can't exactly, yeah, deal yeah. with him like then uh, there's a scene outside a temple there's so much in this movie man. there's a scene outside a temple a uh, load of dead bodies uh, they're real dead bodies and then the police showed up <laughs> where did they get these dead bodies the police showed up <laughs> 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 Like, yes. They should make a movie about making Baby, this movie this like this. So basically, <laughs> the police showed up and they confiscated everyone's passport and took all the dead bodies because it turned out their supplier was a grave robber. Oh my god! And the production this got is, tied up in his oh crimes. My god. This is insane. Um, the 80s, man. So then Martin Sheen had a, like, I think all throughout the 80s maybe, but during this movie anyway, he had a terrible drinking problem. Mm. And I think the opening scene of the movie is. Yeah. Um, is him in a hotel room dancing around and stuff. Uh, Getting pissed drunk. Was isn't not it? in the script. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> he That's was, all fucking real. He yeah. was drunk and like demanded they turn the cameras on. And then... Uh, Film this. And then just had a had an emotional breakdown on camera and they put it in the movie and then he, he tried to attack Francis Ford Coppola on set and stuff like that. Holy... Yeah, he bleeds in that scene. Yeah, 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 he punches him here. Like, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, Let's see what else. So oh, didn't much. he take a heart attack after this film? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's the next part, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not after. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> he basically had a heart attack while filming and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he had to crawl half a mile to find help. <laughs> 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 and then he found help and they told him to not. <laughs> they told him to not tell the studio in case they get shut down. <laughs> so, what did he say happened? He was just had a bad dose of ease. It's obviously a terrible story. <laughs> He's a bit hot. <laughs> so then. Um, the doctor was there, towel on his head, like. fanning it. Then Francis Ford Coppola was under so much pressure during filming this in the heat of uh, of the Philippines that he he lost nearly a hundred pounds while making the movie. He he started having, he started having seizures. <laughs> and he had an emotional breakdown and he threatened to kill himself three times. Oh, oh my, my God. God! Jesus Christ! This is. And there's there's four more facts now. Okay, right. we're nearly there. Uh, the, fi- the, the filming of it was supposed to last 60 days uh, it was dragged into 230 days. oh my god Jesus. that's nearly a year that's, that's, that's eight years already right? <laughs> 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 how much coke that's 236 <laughs> ounces of coke <laughs> <laughs> um, then Martin Sheen was needed for some voiceover work in post production 
and he was just too busy to do it, so they got his brother to come in and just do it instead. Which one, Charlie? Joe Estevez. Joe Estevez. Joe Estevez. Joe Estevez. Yeah. Uh, Charlie's so his kid, isn't it? Charlie's his son. Oh, sorry, his son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Joe Estevez. Uh, also, after he had his heart attack for long shots, like where you couldn't really see his face, someone else also had to stand in for them because he he just didn't want to be working day in day yeah. out after having yeah, a heart attack. Jesus. He was, um, very low. he was very young as well, like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean two hundred and thirty-eight yeah. days of doing cocaine would probably <laughs> do it to you, like, <laughs> regardless <laughs> of age. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, they went so good to that Francois Coppola had to invest seven million of his own money into the movie. Oh my god! Oh my god! And uh, the last fact, which I found the most surprising, is I had no idea that one, this person is even in the movie, and two, that they had this issue. But uh, Lawrence Fishburne is in it. What? He was 14. Very young. Yeah, I've seen this, yeah. He was 14. I didn't know he was lied about his age to get in the movie. And good old Dennis Hopper was there and got him addicted to heroin. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Yeah. I didn't hear that. I did not even know that Lawrence Fishburne was a heroin. I did not know that fucking Lawrence Fishburne was addicted Man. to heroin. Yeah. Morpheus really got his shit together. <laughs> like, honest to God. Yeah. How That's more furious. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I, I assume. I assume once he got back to America, maybe he start getting help. I think it was maybe just Dennis Hopper did the film. But holy like, crazy crap, Dennis Hopper. What yeah. A what a crazy, crazy bastard. It went like. Well, if you've seen Blue Velvet, yeah. you know you well, full like, well what's going on. That, like, <laughs> <laughs> that is going to be hard to top. I, I've never I, I'm, actually, I'm actually devastated that we let you go first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How are we going to follow this, that? This makes mine seem like a fucking dream. Like. So, <laughs> go on about yours. Mine's, um, mine's all about Jared Leto being the Joker. So oh, This God, is yeah. still interesting. Though, this like, is that's very, still very thing, interesting. Like, yeah. yeah, so uh, I have a lot of facts here. So, um, he got really into character. And I watched the behind the scenes for Suicide Squad. I know. It was 20 minutes and it's fucking <laughs> Jared Leto getting his ponytail cut off and picking out his fucking tattoos. Uh, so basically throughout filming, he just went really fucking weird. Um, and everyone had to call him Mr. J, like M-I-S-T-A-H. Like he's fucking... Uh, A rapper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he's fucking... Um, what's, uh, who plays Woody in fucking Toy Story? Why am I blanking on this? <laughs> Tim Allen. Oh, sorry, uh, Tom Hanks. Tom, Tom Hanks' Hanks son, you know, he's like a proper, oh, yeah, he's yeah, like a proper yeah. rasta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So basically, yeah, like that. Um, so he never met Will Smith and refused to talk to Will Smith offset because um, he was Deadpool to him. And, or Deadshot? Was Deadshot. Deadshot, Deadshot, Deadshot yeah, yeah. yeah, and he was the Joker, so that's the first thing he did. Um, he also sent uh, Scarlett Johansson a live rat on set and uh, she kept it for a while, but Scarlett then the not Scarlett Johansson, Margot, Margot, Margot Robbie. Robbie. Sorry, yeah. I'm absolutely dead with names. Like, so Margot Robbie a live rat on set, and she kept it until the production manager found it and was like, "You can't fucking have a rat." <laughs> 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 uh, uh, he sent everyone in the cast um, for the rap party. Sent them a switchblade, loads of porn magazines, which I don't know where he got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, they're yeah. obsolete. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and a switchblade. Uh, he sent everyone in the cast that everyone, like from fucking extras to things. oh, oh and they used condom. That's pretty, that's pretty yeah. chill. And they used, 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 used condom. Wait, they used condom to even extras. How many mm. times did he use them? Yeah, a lot of fucking jizz. <laughs> <laughs> like, like surely the quantity is just. Too much. Too time. much. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it wasn't a so one man sent- job. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I need every extra yeah. to put on one of these condoms <laughs> and I will send it back to you in a week. Yeah, yeah it's fucking horrible. Like. Uh, he also sent everyone a dead hawk. So they were having a rap party and these muscular men came in to the room, dropped a pig's head and a hog body on the table and just left. <clears throat> What the fuck? Yeah. All for Suicide Squad. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, feel, I feel like that's why Suicide Squad. All for, yeah, bad. probably what is known as his worst. Worst. worst movie, probably like, one yeah. of the worst Jokers as well. Yeah, yeah. He, he no, sent, the worst Jokers. The worst Joker. Joker. The worst Joker. I love that. Um, he sent everyone anal beads as well. <laughs> I mean, come on. Like, what, what, what I'm just imagining like, like, Jared Leto going into a sex shop and buying the full rack of anal like, beads. I, I need all these anal beads. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, at what point is it like... 
all right, you're method acting or it's actually harassing yeah. these people? Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, no, no. So loads of people would be like, I don't yeah. want to fucking ever talk to that guy. Viola yeah. Dale- Davis is like, I never want to fucking talk to this guy yeah. again. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. fucking deal with him. I don't want to work he, with him he's again. He's a strange guy. I mean, um, you, I always found it in his um, his music videos for Three Seconds to Mars. They're so, like, fucking... They're, in, they're bizarre. Like, there's, like, the one for... He's very eccentric. He, ha- he used to have the record for... Um, the most expensive music video ever made, which was from yesterday, which is like a film. It's insane. It's like this big, it's set in like Japan and it's like set in like ancient Japan and they have like fully trained samurais in the movie and on. It was like a massive fireworks show and all. And I was like, this is a, this is 30 seconds of ours. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this music is not like good enough for this. this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think he's kind of like put that in the back burner or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just he's a talented actor. guy. He's a talented guy, but I just feel like he did a whole 360 and went up his own arse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind of saw what like Ledger did and he was just like, I'm gonna he wants that, to, he wanted then. to be Ledger. Like, he, yeah. he wants to be fair, in, like this modern, he fair like, enough, it was a very different take on the Joker. But the second I saw that fucking set photo, yeah, just mm. it's just like, but like the damage. But like, just picture it, like the Joker. I like imagine him sitting down in the chair being like, oh, yeah, this tattoo. Ha 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 ha. All yeah, like, ha, sitting there yeah, doing the tattoo. tattoo. Damaged. Ha, ha, like, damaged this on is my not head. fucking Tumblr. Like, like Batman, the Batman logo with a sword in it. Like, yeah. he, he, looked like a, he looked like a wannabe Joker mm. and he was the Joker. You know, the it, Joker, it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you know, it, it just, it seemed like, it seemed like, you know, like that Batman, um, Batman Forever animated TV show yeah. with yeah. like the Joker yeah, yeah. with the dreadlocks. That's like what it felt like. Yeah. I was just kind of like, didn't, didn't he try to get like the? He tried to stop the Joaquin Phoenix Joker from being made. He I did, yeah, yeah, because he had an agreement with the studio or whatever for his own standalone movie. for his own standalone movie, and they were like, "This is not fucking happening." Like, yeah. well, I actually do kind of feel bad with him because he's in the movie for maybe five minutes. I feel yeah. bad for him mm. because, like, the studio were like. They shot so much there's footage. 20, there's there's 25 like, minutes You're of a main just, character. Just yeah, him yeah, being yeah, the Joker. Yeah, yeah. But the original Watch Suicide YouTube, Squad... It's really still not good. It's still not great, yeah. yeah. I mean, the Suicide great. Squad animated film is actually a really good film. Mm. And the main villain is the Joker. And it's like all of these villains trying to basically break the Joker out of prison for like a certain reason. And Harley Quinn is like a main part of that squad. And that all makes sense. But in, in that film, they were just like... It was a big blue light in the sky. Like it was just like oh fuck it like we from have... from like twenty twelve to like Fant Four Stick it was big blue light in the sky yeah it was everything that was the big blue light like, in the sky what's happening I don't know but we need to stop that fox the, yeah the, the, the tesseract yeah. is terraforming yeah. the earth and like, like isn't Jai, Jai Courtney is a fuck um, t- like he's a fucking shit actor he's he's a model he's a model he's a model he's, 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 yeah yeah he started out as a model like that's what he did like he started out as a model yeah, yeah he's, it's yes. just he's just terrible everything he's in I think he's awful. Um, but that movie was destined yeah, to fail. It was destined to fail. Even like Cara Delevingne, like she, like everyone knew that she wasn't an actress. An actress, and they made her instead of Jared Leto, who had gone on and had like brilliant Academy performances. The guy's won an Oscar. The, the last guy literally movie. has a best of. They were like, no, we don't want this like heavy hitter in the acting world to head this film as a new take on the Joker, one of the most famous films of all time, possibly the most famous film of all time. We want Cara Delevingne to be this weird witch spirit. Yeah. <laughs> my, like, my other thing with that is like, I, I, like, it's definitely a perspective that maybe comes along when you're doing acting, but like, if there's a role that you're just going to give to someone who's not an actor, like Cara Delevingne, who yeah, did yeah. modeling and stuff, like, if she auditions for it and gets it, which maybe she did, I don't know, yeah. That's completely. Yeah. <laughs> that's you can't say it, but I can. Well, that, that's <laughs> yeah. you, might, you might meet her. Yeah. Yeah. But like that, that stuff is like cool, whatever. But if a role is disposable enough to you that you're just gonna be like, I right, fuck it, give it to whoever. Just throw with the person. Then like, give it to an actor who's trying to get up there. Don't like just Colin Farrell and Artemis Fowl. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even messing with that. I, ever since I watched Artemis Fowl, I can't stop thinking about how much of a distaste I have for Colin Farrell. And I used to love him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He spent three days on set. We talked about this in fucking yeah. warm, but a lot that, of detail. That's another bit podcast. of scandal. Like, yeah. but, um, <laughs> um, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've got a, I've got like just little small tidbitty one. So I don't have like a one big movie one, but <laughs> well, I, 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 I take this part then because mine it might be a bit bloated. I'm not sure. I, I do have a few more little. Well, we all perfect. Yeah, 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 let's just try the yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah. So this one I actually only read about today, and I thought this was fucking hilarious, but also like fucking really weird. On the last day of shooting Titanic, which was actually a movie that was mired in like 
controversy in that they, they went over budget James Cameron pumped his own money into it but did they actually go down to the, didn't they go yeah, to the bottom they, of the sea yeah they, they went to the bottom of the sea didn't he have like, like, like a Guinness World Record or something yeah like he, he, he it was like, James Cameron he recovered he recovered fucking <laughs> 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 was yeah, yeah he was literally in the vessel like. um, but they, like yeah they, like, re- they recovered more of the Titanic for that movie than like actual like marine fucking explorers like but anyway um, on the last day of shooting Someone spiked the clam chowder. I've heard this. <laughs> with PCP. <laughs> which I, is heard, like, I heard it was LSD. Yeah, well, it was a hallucinogenic. Yeah, yeah. PCP. Yeah. So, like, That's a, crack a, angel <laughs> like. And apparently, so one girl who was on set, a crew member, did, was one of the few people who have spoken about it. And she was like, it was fucking crazy. She was like, everyone was losing their shit. And she goes, and what's worse was the people who were, were like, into drugs were taking it ba- worse because they were getting bad trips and it was like bringing back bad <laughs> stuff. PTSD, like. And they were all just absolutely off their tits. It was like that movie Climax I was telling you Honestly, about. that, that, like, someone spiked the clam chowder on the Titanic. Sounds like a job for Detective Poirot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Inspector Who spiked Poirot? the clam chowder? I heard, I heard uh, Leonardo DiCaprio maybe was like the only person who skipped lunch that day. So, so he, he, he didn't get spiked. The, like, he yeah. the he's definitely yeah. spiked. He's got yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that man has such a clean record. Like, yeah, 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 like, yeah. like people give him shit. Like the most thing you can get on Leonardo DiCaprio is he's a twenty-five-year-old girlfriend. Like. Yeah, he's a, he's, he's a girl boy. But uh, sorry, I'm getting more water. Here That's fine. Know. I'm so fucking hydrated through this podcast. I'm talking about eight. Um, so yeah that's a that's a little small one but obviously there's other things with titanic it went over budget they spent a ton of money and yeah it's putting the money yet. i have another one here everyone apparently towards the end of the texas chainsaw massacre vomited every single day because that's a it was a really cheap movie if you've seen it it's a 70s it's a grindhouse film it's you know it's Cold classic. Cold Ooh. classic. You know, but it, it was shot on a shoestring heavy. budget. Yeah, it's really violent stuff, but they used loads of carcasses of animals to be hanging up on the walls to make it look like this family idea. Like but of course, they bought all these carcasses. It was a low budget movie. They're not going to keep buying new carcasses. Of course. They stayed on set. They're also shooting in Texas uh. in the heat the 40 degree heat and everyone just said all the meat and all the bones and everything just started rotting horrifically and they weren't replacing them they're like that's our budget (laughs) they were like we've spent it all on meat so they would do takes and then they'd be like okay everyone needs to vomit run out and like it was literally like everyone would go out have a have a puke they actually had to get a doctor then on set to prescribe everybody with um the equivalent of like i don't know like a, a nausea like medication he eats the stomach he eats the stomach because right? everyone was just <laughs> yeah I mean like so to be fair that's that's fairly minor the one I do want to talk about though big one I want to talk about is Werner Herzog's movie okay Fitzcarraldo and this is the subject of an entire documentary also made by Werner Herzog and I highly recommend it it's called My Best Fiend and it's about him and an actor called Klaus Kinski and you know Werner Herzog, don't you? He's the German doc. He's, he's known for his documentaries, but he was actually a, a filmmaker for years. He made regular films, but now he's known for his documentaries. He's a really interesting character. Um, just watching him being interviewed is the funnest thing ever. There's an interview where he's in standing in the middle of this place in Germany, and he gets shot. It is the weirdest thing ever. He gets shot by a bullet, and it's like they're out in like the mountains in Germany, and he reckons a hunter misfired and hit him. He actually like, got shot. He like. gets shot. Now it's not like it doesn't go. The bullet goes in, but it's not like it's it's like a pellet almost. And he's like, he's like, oh my god. And they're like, you're like bleeding. Shot kind yeah, of and yeah. it's like it's on him, and it's like there's a there's a big mark on it. And they're like, should we go to the hospital? He's like, no, no, it is not significant. Let's continue with the interview. <laughs> like, and I was like, holy. I thought shit. you were talking about like a stage thing. No, no, <laughs> this guy was just shot by someone. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone has a hit out on him, I don't know. But... <laughs> hit him with a fucking a bee ball gun. Like. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so he was making this movie called Fitzcarraldo with this actor who at the time, Klaus Kinski, was considered one of these like amazing stage actors. Lunatic. Absolute lunatic. Like you look back on it now and everyone's like, that guy had severe mental health problems. Like really, really bad. Um, but he really liked Werner Herzog and he was notoriously like the worst person on set. So they make this movie called um, Fitzcarraldo where it's about 
they shot it in Peru and it's about this guy who's taking a boat up this river in Peru mm-hmm. that's all the movie's about and they shot it with natives and stuff so they actually got this boat and they tried to put it up this river in Peru and of course it was a fucking disaster the boat nearly capsized like four times it was they'd smashed it up Klaus Kinski and Werner Herzog nearly killed themselves so many Fuck times in the middle of all this Klaus Kinski and Werner Herzog are fighting every day to the point where it's just like and the beauty of it is there's footage of all of this go look it up <laughs> on YouTube you can watch every ounce of it and there's one there's one moment where Klaus Kinski is giving out about the food they're eating and he is like scre- he's like the scariest guy ever he's screaming at all the cats he's like how am I meant to eat this shit it's all in German by the way which is hilarious and he's absolutely screaming and Bernard Herzog is just so chill and he's like we're, we're either doing the scene we're all eating it he's like it's up to, you know we're, we're just gonna keep doing this and everyone said the, the documentary My Best Fiend is well worth watching because it has all this footage and everyone said Werner Herzog somehow knew how to handle him like no one else could um, but apparently behind the scenes they were fighting so much that uh, Klaus Kinsey was like I'm getting out of here I'm not finishing this movie it's a complete shit show and Werner Herzog said if you leave here I've got a shotgun in my car I'm going to kill you and then I'm going to kill myself and that'll be the end of it and it, like, he was like okay then I'll finish your movie <laughs> <laughs> Um, but they also shot a film called um, Aguirre the Destroyer and it's this medieval film and uh, Klaus Kinsey again was an absolute fucking lunatic on set and uh, at one point he he's wielding a sword and they're pillaging a village and he swings the sword at this guy so hard that he bashes him on the head they had to take the helmet off and he had to get hospital treatment and they said if he wasn't wearing a helmet he would have Fully fucking Gosh. killed. He's <laughs> yeah. right. And the funniest thing is, no one has seen these movies. Like they are, they're not. They're not really big movies at all. Like, is it any good? Um, I thought that. Um, <laughs> I I thought that Fitzgerald was was quite good. It was an interesting story, and it was kind of. Well, does it look like shit? Does it look like the boat's going to capsize? Oh, like, it, like the boat is literally getting thrown around on the rocks, and you, like it gives you so much anxiety because that's what was happening. And like, there's literally shots where you can see the boat is like that, and the camera is completely <laughs> tilted, and then it's like this fella's hanging on to like <laughs> the, like the railings and stuff, trying to get the shot. Like, it is just absolutely bizarre, and they're just these weird German art house movies that no one's really seen. Yeah. Like. I have a. A real quick one that I'm not going to do like a main piece on, but it's a Japanese horror film based in World War Two. It's kind of like Overlord in, in many ways, but hey, a lot lower budget and a lot fucking more mental. Um, it's called One Cut of the Dead. I don't know if any of you have heard of it. Essentially, it's like they're doing all these like experiments of like Japanese experiments on all these. I I know the gist of the plot, but it's meant to be fucked anyway. But for the film, there's a scene where they have to light rats on fire. So what they did Fine, yeah. was they got a couple of hundred rats together. <laughs> oh my god. And they lit them on fire. Oh, uh, that is so of, grim. All of the, now the shot, to be fair, is actually incredible. <laughs> <laughs> all of the blazing rats just disappears. And the first thought that came into my head was, like, what the fuck? If they, what, what if they needed to get the shot again? <laughs> <laughs> Bring me another thousand rats. <laughs> that relates to another one that I have here called, have you ever heard of the movie Cannibal Holocaust? Oh yeah. yeah! Let's talk about Cannibal oh, Holocaust. Okay, well, yes. real, real quick. There's, that, the rats was only the cherry. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a scene there is where where they have to like do an experiment on a little boy. Do not do. So <clears throat> what they did was they dissect a little boy on screen. That they didn't murder the little boy, but they did go to a local hospital yeah. and get the cadaver Holy. of an extremely young little boy and they cut him open on screen and you can see like his liver and his entrails what coming out fuck? none of it's censored did this film get a release yeah it? yeah holy Surely. shit yeah. sure like it doesn't matter how much budget you have you can just fucking imply it like get the fucking sheet like i'm sure you could go to the butchers and get the, <laughs> some sort of equivalent yeah, give like, me the finest cow liver yeah. literally like a, a chill a child's liver on screen and all it was this is that's not chill, right? that is yeah. so not chill no, what so we do for art let's go on about Hannibal uh, Hannibal 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 you're such an idiot you're such an idiot you fucking idiot you get out of here you have ruined this podcast <laughs> start again <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the bathroom <laughs> Oh, that was tasty. That was, that was sexy, wasn't uh, it? So sorry, we we were we've refueled. We've um, coffee break. We've had a coffee break. We're sipping on the finest instance of Jack's households right here now, um, 
and Mark was just about to talk about. Oh, uh, God. No, yeah. <laughs> you fucking idiot. You idiot. Yeah. <laughs> again. Oh, God. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the <laughs> um, Yeah, so basically, seven albums died. Just a much more somber note there for everybody. <laughs> uh, they killed seven animals making the movie. Like, literally like killed Like, on them. screen, yeah. On yeah, screen, yeah. yeah. Um, the film was based, apparently, off a documentary that the director had seen about... Or maybe it's like a movie about a documentary of people uh, investigating cannibals. But um, the cast signed contracts before making the movie that required them to disappear for a year after filming it to allude to the fact, the fact that they had actually died when making the movie. Right. So then the movie came out. Uh, ten days after its premiere, it was seized by the Italian courts. The director, Ruggiero Diodato, whose name... Uh, Probably butchered, just but butchered, but um, he was arrested with a charge of obscenity and murder because of the cast. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then the cast finally yeah, came out later, showed up in the, and showed then the, the, the murder party. charges were dropped. Like Gandalf, just when he needed yeah. <laughs> um, One of the actors, Robert Kerman, I don't know who he played in it, he was actually a porn actor and this was him trying to get into mainstream cinema. I think he did one other movie after this and then just went back to four. Tough gig, man. Tough yeah. gig. <laughs> that guy can fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, well, it was banned in 50 countries. The director says he, <laughs> he regrets absolutely everything about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was originally named The Green Inferno and then in 2013, Eli Roth made a movie that was a uh, oh, homage yeah. to this movie. And then, in an attempt to get locals to be in the Green Inferno, Eli Roth showed them Cannibal Holocaust, and they all thought it was a comedy. Fuck off, yeah. no way. And they all agreed to be in it, because they thought it was hilarious. That is so... Well, there was, there was one thing I know about Hannibal Carbot. No, oh, oh, you idiot! Yeah. <laughs> Who is this Hannibal? We should just <laughs> kill just you. Like, <laughs> this movie. <laughs> it's <a> Holocaust Cannibals. <laughs> <laughs> It's a kind of a holocaust. It's, yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have it. Apparently um, the only reason they said they, they put holocaust in the title as well is because they thought it was just shocking. 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 But um, there's a scene in it where one of the natives or one of the people is uh, decapitated and like Sorry, not to capitalize it. Uh, what's the word? Impaled. Impaled, yes. That's the better word. And, um, <laughs> they, it caused so much controversy that they thought a person was actually impaled and they had to like do an investigation into it. But to be to this film's credit, it does look really real. He had to, I think he had to go to court and explain how they did it. How they like, actually Because yeah, yeah. when you see that shot, you can look it up. Yeah. I mean, it does look like I someone's mean, to been be impaled. Fair, you know you've made a good film when the law has to get together. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when you're testifying what, what's it about let me guess okay okay I've never seen this movie okay okay um, cannibals yeah cannibals <laughs> I think it's probably just a remake or not a remake but no, it's all homage to what's that fucking movie where dun, 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 deliverance dun, dun, deliverance not far off is it kind oh, of like yeah, deliverance yeah, yeah. it's a bunch of filmmakers going into a South American and they get uh, aged, do they? A South American jungle. It's like a found footage. Found footage. Oh, found yeah. Found footage in the 70s. Was... It was one of the first movies that did that. I think so, yeah. Well, it's not all found footage. They they have a bit at the start of it where you have these two stuffy guys going, this tape better not get out to the public. Oh, dear. And then it's like, <laughs> what you're about to see is, is <laughs> real. It's real. Yeah. Yeah. I um, fucking uh, didn't realise because on the last Mids podcast we actually talked about the Blair Witch quite a bit. All right, I have loads and loads here and loads. I came so over. I'm and so over. But the, Mark's the, delivering the goods on this <laughs> podcast. You, you probably noticed that, Mark, the, um, that the Blair Witch crew and cast were basically like Tropic Thundered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were, they were, thrown they were into, dropped in, yeah. They were thrown into like a forest. It was like they weren't given days, scripts or instructions. They were followed clues and then the crew just tormented them. Yeah, they'd, yeah. they'd mess with them during the night. They'd, they'd steal their like, like their they'd equipment. Like wailing in the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> People were just like bursting in their gun. Like, ah. there's, a, there's a scene where like the tent starts going crazy and they're like, what the fuck is that? And like, it was just the director's like shaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you might have heard Sanchez, the director was like, we just wanted to spook them. <laughs> they had to, um, they had to, what was it? I have it written down here somewhere. They had to sign uh, some sort of contract that was basically, yeah, they had to sign a contract that gave the production permission to just mess with Torment them. them. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, they said that like they were allowed to sleep for the first night, 
and then like the rest of the night they just didn't get a wink. Yeah, yeah because it was, all, it was only like a course of project, eight days. So uh, fucking like weird. all of this stuff was just eight that days. That film is a testament to low budget. Like, uh, yeah. you know yeah, what? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, like, you know what? I watched it. I watched it for like like full through, and like nothing happens. But when you it's know spooky. the story behind it, you enjoy it more. I think yeah. when you yeah. know yeah, all yeah, that, yeah. like all that first, production um, stuff, viral. Viral marketing campaign. Yeah. It's the first movie to ever have its own website. Mm. Oh, really? cool. Yeah. Pretty they're, cool. They're in apparently Heather and Mike. I don't know if they're the character names or the actors' names. I think they had the characters' names. Characters names. names were the characters, yeah. yeah. The it's characters, like, Heather and Mike, were like supposed to hate each other. No way. And Josh was supposed to be like the mediator of the group stuff. But uh, Heather and Josh hated each other. actually hated each other. And then um, they just couldn't find a way to make the movie look like Josh was a good person. <laughs> <laughs> like apparently Josh just like like insulted her all the time and he like really went at her like and then uh, they were editing it and he was like, Yeah, there's no way I can make Josh look like a good person in this movie. It's it's I, I love these kind of stories because like it's so messed up but it's like this movie like made so much money. But mm, it was just so a couple of lads going into the forest. The budget, the uh, what was the budget again? Five thousand dollars or something, or maybe it was a bit. They they also that. did the same thing as um, Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. making missing like posts. yeah, doing the missing yeah. poster stuff. Yeah, I love I love the marketing behind it, like, mm. but, but uh, it's just but fucking but ingenious. Like speaking of uh, cast being tormented, we did mention in our Stephen King podcast, which is gone in gone. the other world, but uh, Stanley Kubrick infamously. Absolutely mm. picked on just Shelley Duvall on set of uh, The Shining to a point where she actually started to lose her own hair and and fainted regularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she lost a ton of weight as well. Yeah, she looks like shit in that movie. Yeah, and and people like said in, he did in it. the nicest way possible. Yeah, Sorry, Shelley. But like they did, they apparently he did it intentionally did it to make her yeah. this like I mean, frightened. It's about getting it, bored. Did he, yeah. or is that just like? Fucking fanboys being like, he's not a terrible person. I think that's yeah. fanboys covering for Kubrick. Yeah. I think Kubrick was an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> There's literally video footage of him like abusing her, basically. Yeah. Not yeah. abusing her, but just going mental. And he, he used to like regularly praise Jack Nixon and be like, yeah. he's so much better. And, than and Jack would show up late on set and he'd never say anything about yeah. it. If Shelley <laughs> was even a minute late, he was like. <laughs> well, it was like, to, to be fair to Kubrick. It was like Shelley Duvall was meant to be tormented by a man. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Jack Nicholson was meant to have this ego complex about him. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you definitely she, like she started losing hair, man. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's too far, man. Like, also, a fucking yeah. nightmare to put up the whole thing. Apparently, just yeah. this fucking nightmare. The weather and conditions, the weather, and, and that yeah. fucking building is supposed to be fucking spooky as fucking way. But also, like, what the fuck? is going on in that movie <laughs> like I watched like the scene where there's like a fucking a furry giving a guy a head yeah. or something I was like I, I saw that when I was like 8 and I was like I'm on board <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, but I, I was like watching it going into it being like is it Kubrick movie or whatever this is going to yeah, be weird yeah. I was like okay that came up and I was like somebody expl- like, yeah, I mean, did, I, I, did I, he I, do that just to be like well, let's see what they say I about this like, I genuinely like, like, wasn't a massive fan of The Shining I think it's mental like not in like a way that it's kind of oh that's really cool it's kind of like yeah there's a furry giving someone head <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see this is again this is like I, I have this hunch that back in the 60s and 70s if you like I'd say if people were afraid to call out any artistic yeah, choices yeah, yeah. because it was like you don't get it man and it was like I wonder if well, it was like, just like, like I'm gonna throw this in to fucking freak people it's out it's like, like space odyssey like I know there's like a lot of symbolism and stuff but I remember the first time I watched it for the first 20 minutes I was like what the fuck oh, is that no, no, stop I mean, space odyssey as like visually pleasing a film as that is, you're what just like, what? You're, you're, you're just like, Jesus Christ, do I have to watch all of this? And then thing? you go through like 40 minutes and no one says anything and someone's going yeah. on a jog Complete, and I'm like, yeah. They had apparently like close to 240 extra hours of footage for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, that's where NASA got their moon, their moon landing yeah. footage. <laughs> well, reportedly. And um, to keep them quiet, they killed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, reportedly, apparently, when he was making the film, Kubrick didn't really know what the hell it was about when he was shooting it. And uh, it shows. He, I mean, exactly, the film came out that way. But uh, he had shot all the stuff and the, the studio was putting him under pressure. And then he, he had hired a composer to write an original score for it. And there is parts of an original score in it. But the big thing about Space Odyssey is the use of classical music. Like, yeah. Mm. And uh, essentially, the producers were like, show us what you've done. And he had nothing together. So he just spliced what footage he had together through that that classical music on top of it and they were like 
Love it. Give us more of that. And he told the composer to just stop what he was fucking doing. <laughs> He's like, oh, we're going with Brahms, baby. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I, I have another one of just like complete negligence on set, essentially. <laughs> and it is the Twilight Zone movie. Oh, yeah, oh, I know what you're gonna say. This one is yeah. this, this one, this one is bad. I, I, I kind of had to include it. This isn't like my big one or anything like that. But um, there could be a few things. I only know one thing about this. Yeah, movie. I don't think the, the yeah, main yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I think it's essentially the main thing. Uh, yeah, we, we know. So uh, <laughs> the director, and this actually isn't funny. To be fair, I don't know. Do you know where I started <laughs> this with the laugh? But the director um, and writer. But sorry, am I right in saying that the Twilight Zone was directed by multiple directors in like segments? Because Spielberg is involved. It's four four directors. So Ooh, the director yeah. of this segment, John Landis, who was a big a big director, big director. He essentially there was there's a scene with actor Vic Morrow, and he had to carry two children across this like really busy river, and like there was so much explosions and different things happening, uh, bullets flying, and they were meant to be running away from American soldiers. And the scene looks horrible as is, but the two children were illegal, uh, illegal workers because they wanted to avoid labor laws, child labor laws, child labor laws like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, in California. So one of the executive producers told the children's parents there were two, I think, young Vietnamese children, uh, told uh, told the parents not to like tell anyone that they were in the scene. Basically, that was on set and hide them from the fire safety officer oh, and Jesus. The this is terrible and the fire safety <laughs> officer uh, basically saw what stunt they were going to be doing which was lighting explosions everywhere with a helicopter on top and he said that there are definitely concerns about the explosion but he never overly voiced it he kind of kept it under wraps so next minute this scene is Vic Morrow carrying the two young Vietnamese children across a river explosions bullets flying everywhere rain rivers flowing as well like this is a running river like and um, he drops one of the kids in the water and just as that happens an explosion goes off hits one of the helicopters it hits the helicopter's tail an actual helicopter that's an, act fine. an actual <laughs> helicopter and the helicopter plummets into the scene into the actor and the young child they both get decapitated and the other child who was in the river who fell in the river because the scene was difficult as rough as it is that gets crushed insane. by the helicopter and during the shooting of the scene there is actual like voice recordings of John Landis being like arguing with the pilots the pilots were like we need to fly it like fly this up this is too low it's too dangerous and John Landis was like get it lower we might have to lose the helicopter and Holy when crap. it went to court it was seen as an unforeseeable mistake that is Jesus. insane but the children's parents got millions in restitution. But Just it was an, an out of court settlement kind of thing. Out, it, out of court settlement, yeah. It was it, yeah they settled essentially. But the fact that that was seen as an unforeseeable mistake mm. is, yeah. is absolutely gobsmacked. You breached Maybe, all, yeah. What's his name? Vic Morrow. The captain. Yeah, he before they did the scene as well. He saw the stunt and he was like, I can't believe I'm doing this. It's like they're trying to kill me and stuff like that. Yeah, no, like literally. He literally was like, Everyone upset yeah, yeah, yeah. was like, What is. And there, there's video footage that I, I watched for the That explains why, like, well, I don't know, maybe Mark, you can attest this, but apparently movie sets and stuff are like really heavily unionized now. And like, oh, shit. That, that movie regulated. is one of the reasons why because uh, of, because of trying to label us as hell strict like now. That, yeah. Like, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. fucking mental. That's insane. It's insane, though, how the director <laughs> knowingly used illegal child workers and told them to hide from the fire marshal told them to hide, hide from the fire, fire marshal and isn't in prison mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah yeah like he got them does he killed. still work well did he work um, after this? I mean I imagine he did I know for like a fact that like a, a load of actors had serious PTSD from this and like a yeah. load of yeah. it's, kind of, like, a load it's, of it's a it's a massive movie controversy I mean it, oh, what did the movie come out they, they yeah. Yeah. Came out the this guy John Lannis I don't think so Mm. <laughs> yeah, I really Twilight Zone is very kind of it, 50s, it, 60s TV. It's like it was a yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like the yeah. last film yeah. he did as an actor now it was like a kind of fucking two bit job, you know. But your man John Landis was in 2019, so he's still going good. Mm, okay, well, he's still working. Which is, it isn't for you. Good thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you killed them kids. Well, I'm going to lighten the mood a little bit then after that, just real quickly. I'm going to talk about an actor an actor feud, which I thought was fucking hilarious. And it's between Sylvester Stallone and Richard Gere. 
and it's gone on since the 70s and it's never ever subsided these are two old men now who've never been able to bury the hatchet and I thought Richard Gere died a few back. No, no, he's still Richard going. The, really, the Mandela going. effect is what yeah. it really is, but actually it was Patrick Swayze. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but um, essentially they were in a movie in 1974 called The Lords of Flatbush together, and apparently they just did not get along. And uh, people didn't know whether it was like two chauvinists trying to annoy each other and stuff. But essentially they were constantly at each other on set, and it was getting to a point where it was like, are these guys going to keep working together? And what tipped it over the edge was Sylvester Stallone had a brand new car on set, a Cadillac, okay? And he's sitting in the car and they're having lunch and he was really, really protective of the car. And Richard Gere came along with a turkey sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently Stallone telling the story is like so passionate. He's like, he came along and he had the sandwich and it was Dripping in mustard, man. He knew it was dripping in mustard. <laughs> and apparently Stallone was like, if you get a drop of that mustard in my car, I'm going to beat your ass. And Richard Gere was like, ooh, ooh <laughs> this mustard. <laughs> yeah. He spilled mustard in the car. The two of them got in a fist fight and they couldn't finish like any scenes together for the rest of the fucking Who comes on top? I think they just had a bit of a scuffle. No, I don't no, know. but like in your opinion. Stallone is rocky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Richard Gere fucking up that. Richard Gere does Richard, not fuck around. Richard Gere's a hunk too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I give it to him too, but. Uh... So I, I, my big one was kind of similar to Mark, so which was just a film that was just played like cursed from the get go. Now, it did. now I, I thought this one was bad, but I don't know if it will top Apocalypse now. But this is the 1994 film, The Crow. Oh, oh my god, god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This now, is supposed to be a very good film as well. Yeah, it is, yeah. And like, a lot of people know the main kind of horrible thing that happened in it, but the build up to making this film was just cursed from the get go. And it started from production, and it started quite small, and even the quite small thing is like, what the fuck? But essentially, as soon as they started production, a crane worker building the set. Uh, hit a power lines it coursed through his body burning all of his organs what? and he did live but he was basically fried from the inside Fucking he out. survived he survived yeah holy crap apparently an equipment truck was lit on fire I don't know by who <laughs> <laughs> it, it was either it was lit on it fire was crow. It, it, it was either lit on fire or it crashed it, it, it was either or um a publicist got into a massive car crash, a really bad car crash. As there were multiple stunt accidents, like where, like people fell through literal ceilings and like broke every bone in their body. Mm. And another guy got like a huge nail all the way through his hand in like designing something. I, I don't know what it was. Then a disgruntled employee <laughs> got into a truck and drove it through the entire set. Oh my god! Fucking and hell. destroyed the majority of the set. Now this is all like in, like in the filming it was in the middle of fucking I, I don't know where it was but apparently it was in the absolute sticks and it was horrible conditions for everyone mm. and obviously setting them back a couple of millions again like the, destroying the set then as soon as they rebuilt the set the blizzard of the century which is what it was called hit <laughs> yes. and there was 30 <laughs> 30 inches of snow on set oh my god <laughs> during the filming so again that completely destroyed the set for the second time and they had to rebuild it from the ground up costing them another couple of million in repairs and damages and just like general time and everything like it went on for a ridiculous amount of time and the leading star of the film then Brandon Lee who is uh, Bruce Lee's only son Bruce Lee's only son which when I, heard, when I heard that I was like who the fuck is Jet Li? <laughs> I, was, I know I used to think that too but then it's Jet Li is L.I. and Bruce I, Lee is yeah, I know, yeah, 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 yeah. it's yeah. crazy, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, yeah, Bra Brandon Lee, uh, very fucking infamously, was murdered on set. Not murdered. Murder's murdered. not the right word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to... <laughs> I mean, though. And it, it, this leads to my conspiracy. <laughs> you should have got his mouth shut about Hollywood's elite. <laughs> so essentially what happened was... They were shooting a scene which is a flashback to kind of the start of the film where the lead character, like all heroes, goes through their kind of like trial and tribulation where the horrible tragedy happens and essentially the lead character gets shot, he gets killed 
and then he reemerges as the crow, a supernatural yeah, yeah, yeah. crow comes on his grave, and then he's the crow, like really, really cool shit. To be fair, I, I, I'm really behind this film. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they were shooting the flashback scene, and what happened was is they had one revolver for basically all of the scenes, and for one scene they needed to film it, film it from the front. So what they had was they had dummy bullets that basically they had no gunpowder in it, and. Um, they were shot from the front, but apparently someone like clicked it and hit it off, and one of the dummy bullets got trapped in the chamber. So when they switched out the scenes for when they were shooting with Brandon Lee, they uh, changed the bullets around to blanks to make the noise, and no one checked the chamber because the gun safety officer had gone home early that day and had oh, been told man, to go home early insane, that day. Like... So this actually wasn't really anyone's fault because it was kind of like a whole thing. It was just a circumstance thing. So your man, Mike Massey, it was like infamous for doing this basically he was in the scene his, he played a character called Fun Boy who, who shot Brandon Lee's character and what happened was the blank let off enough pressure that it shot the bullet straight into Brandon Lee's stomach and because it was a, they were acting and he was supposed to collapse on the floor and basically like play it off like he was dying no one knew for like a full couple of minutes to like go until straight the blood to formed and, and, and like the, the pool of blood around him formed and then they had to rush him off to hospital and he, he died in surgery he died in like six hours I genuinely yeah. think this is just an unfortunate accident yeah he was so fucking young as well yeah. now let me get into my conspiracy <laughs> <laughs> so he was, he was 27 when he died Jeez. and Bruce Lee was 32 when he died yeah and he died of brain swelling everyone says but apparently it was death by misadventure which I'm not necessarily sure what that means. I didn't know really. I actually think it. that's a generic term. That could be a generic term. That could be a generic term. Idea. But anyway, in one of his films, The Game of Death, one of his last films, mm, Bruce yeah. Lee plays a part where he is an actor who dies essentially by getting shot with a prop gun. He gets shot in the head. And uh, like he, he dies by a misfire of a prop gun. Mm. Exactly what happened to his son <clears throat> a couple insane. of years later. Insane. He d- and uh, people think it's because the triads. <laughs> so go, go Are we talking the, about like the, the gang right triads? Yeah, so, like, like so the, the, the mafia, the, 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 the Korean mafia, or was so, it the Chinese yeah, mafia? I, I think it's the Chinese mafia, the triads. Apparently, wanted to get back at the Lee family for not starring in the films that they produced and funded. So, they so what they did this. was they killed both of them and then killed Brandon Lee in a in a in a very ironic way. You love a good conspiracy. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I'm just stating their existence. <laughs> <laughs> but ever since everyone says that the the Crow film is uh, pretty cursed. But um, one thing that did happen was unfortunately because of like all of the events that took place with Brandon Lee, the sh- film itself was given permission by his wife or his fiance and his, and his mother to go ahead and like keep on making the film and it was the first film where an actor's face was superimposed oh. yeah um, with with uh yeah with, with, like, yeah apparently it was really really like not poorly done but like it was very kind of like flash shots rather yeah yeah yeah, yeah, then, like, yeah but I, like i mean that stemmed from like the crow and it's and the movie's like got then. such a such a big following it's like, got it's such a big like, following but it was also abandoned by paramount and then Miramax had to step in and put like an extra eight million into to it to do all of the superimposing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm glad it got finished and it got released. <clears throat> and there is no footage of Brandon Lee, like even though it was recorded, there's no footage of him getting shot. Like, like despite shot, like yeah. what, apparently there's loads of like fake videos out there, but there is no no actual real footage. One. Yeah, they, they, they literally makes these videos. Yeah. Burnt, they burnt that on the spot. But um, yeah, ever since they've been trying to, they've made multiple Crow uh, sequels that have been basically abandoned and like disowned by every director that's ever made them yeah. because uh, just like studio agreements and stuff like that. But then Sony took it over and they've been trying to make a Hollywood blockbuster since. And uh, Luke Evans, Bradley Cooper, Nicholas Hulk have all been up for the role. And most recently, Jason Momoa was the Crow. The crow. He, he released a statement being like, I'm going to be the crow and everything and stuff like that. And then he had to abandon it halfway through as well. So there's a, it's a cursed role. It's a cursed role. Nicholas Holt would be really good now. I, I think yeah. he'd be very yeah. good. He'd be yeah. very good. He'd be yeah. great actor. I, um, I, have, I have three movies I go through very quick here. Absolutely. Minor points them. about them that are all cursed. Uh, the Omen is the first one. Oh, yeah. The original yeah. 1970s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gregory Peck, one of the actors. Mm. 
apparently just before filming, his son committed suicide. Yikes. Whoa. Uh, on the first day of filming, a group of crew members got into a car crash. Richard Donner, who I think was the director, the director yeah. stayed in the hotel while he was filming, and it was bombed by the IRA. Oh, my God. And Gregory Peck, again, at the end of filming, I think he had a flight to, like, Pakistan or something, and he cancelled the flight. And that plane crashed and had no survivors. Holy Apparently shit! Apparently, two of the British cinemas that this was shown in burned down. Were both struck by lightning. Oh Holy Jesus! Yeah, and they use Rottweilers on the um, screen. Awesome. They attack the crew members. Mm. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Mark, don't make a movie where like you're, you're named Damien and you're just a dick to your mom and dad. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Trying to haunt the cast. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, um, now this might be in Poltergeist, but I think it was the Omen. Is uh, I, I have some notes on Poltergeist. <laughs> four, four of the like, crew members in the main cast. That's like, Poltergeist. That's, Pol- yeah, that's Poltergeist. That's Poltergeist. Right. Um, there's a lot of tragedies. Another one is The Exorcist. I don't have many notes on this. I feel like there's a lot more yeah, that I we don't did a whole have. Episode on yeah. That, I think, well. uh, three actors died after filming. One flew. Uh, one just after finishing his scenes, and one after the movie came out. Someone, I think it was. The director, maybe his brother, died while he was filming. Yes, yes, that is correct. Yeah, no, it was. Do you know who it was? It was Max von von Sydow, the the older priest. Okay. His brother passed away during yeah. the shooting of the film. The, one of the cameraman's wife gave birth to a stillborn child. Whoa. Jesus, that's uh, a bad one. And Ooh. the night watchman for the set died. The set also burnt down as well. And yeah. they had to get in a priest. They had to get a priest to come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, instead of just like, I don't know, a, a, a safety inspector, it's yeah. like. Sorry, actually, before we go on to the poltergeist real quick, fucking the poltergeist use real dead bodies as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the they, skeletons. They use, they use skeletons, yeah, skeletons, which is yeah. insane. The weird We're thing is, someone. people <laughs> think that. The skeletons is why the movie's cursed because they were messing they with were the messing dead. With the yeah, that fuck that shit. So basically, yeah. between the first and the third, maybe four of the lead cast members died. Uh, Dominique Dunn was the first one. She was twenty-two. She was strangled by her by ex-boyfriend. Her ex-boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, the the other two were older, kind of natural causes. One was stomach cancer, and one was uh, surgery complications. Mm-hmm. And then Heather O'Rourke, the the, the, the little the girl, child, little girl. Uh, had some sort of apparently if you watch the third one you can see it like in her face she was really bloated so she had some sort of illness and uh, after getting surgery she had a heart attack and died it's insane it's then, uh, yeah, insane some, some just Oliver, Oliver Robbins who's like a little I think he's just a little boy in the movie so I don't know who he plays I actually haven't seen the movie but um, there's a scene where a animatronic like clown like chokes him they didn't have obviously special mm. effects at the time yeah 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 uh, and they were like testing it and he was in the room by himself and it actually started choking him and Jesus they like they Christ. didn't know and steven spielberg saw it on the screens and had to like run into the room and get the robot off him like and like he did a whole thing on reddit like talking about yeah, that I, day and stuff and he was like if steven spielberg didn't come in like i would have died like holy crap fucking hell I, I love didn't, these I didn't, stories. I didn't though. know about that yeah like we need to do like a full segment on um, just um, this crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um what else was there? The last point I have, maybe the last two, the James Caan, who wrote the novel of the movie, yeah. while he was writing it one night, uh, there was a terrible storm, lightning struck his house, and the face of his AC unit blew off, shot across the room, and smacked him in the back. What the hell? Like, and then, you shouldn't, you shouldn't fucking go. Apparently, <laughs> then after that happened, his TV turned on, and his, like, whatever game he constantly had came on, his video games just turned on, like, after he hadn't done anything. Oh, Obviously, lightning did destroy his house. Here we go. It's a me. Yeah. <laughs> but if I, like, isn't that like a massive part of the film, the TV static just around the TV static. Yeah, yeah. And then um, they also had an exorcism before that set. That is just jet. Like, I walk I'm into fucking show, afraid you just say, let's just drop it. Like, this is haunted. One really freaky thing. This isn't a horror movie. It's it's not freaky. It's just weird, and and it shows how Hollywood used to operate. Is the Wizard of Oz had a lot of shit I did not know about. Yeah, like or, uh, shit. Or, 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 what, what was her name again? Orgies. What was the what was the Judy Garland? Judy Garland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently, one of them confirmed that like none of that's true. Please, <laughs> 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 not of the legend. <laughs> probably what you'd say if you were involved. <laughs> 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 
Um, yeah, Judy Garland apparently was treated absolutely hard. Oh, they like pumped pills until once they go home. home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, the Frank Morgan, who played five different characters in the movie. <laughs> that was so Hollywood back Including then. Including the wizard. We've got this yeah. man who could do everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he, he brought a briefcase to set and everyone just assumed it was a script and turned out to be a minibar. And he just drink all day. He used to have champagne. He'd be dr- he's apparently if you watch it, he's drunk and like all this. I fully support that. Yeah. Uh, that work. <laughs> the uh, the lion costume was made of actual lion. Oh my god! Oh, it okay. is elegant. And then th- this one is it does look amazing. the craziest. The uh, so Margaret Hamilton who plays the evil witch. Uh, the scene where she's leaving, I think it's called Munchkin Land in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and she like bursts into flames and stuff like that. Uh, they did one take. They're like, that's cool, that's fine, let's do one more for safety. She got burns everywhere, in her hands, her face. Uh, they couldn't remove the paint from the burns. Oh my God. The only cold way cold. they could remove it was to pour alcohol on it. Oh my God. And then she went to the hospital, came back, she completely lost faith in the effects department. And there's, I, I haven't seen the movie in a very long time, but there's a scene where like the witch is riding something in the sky with a broomstick. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she didn't want to do it she was like i don't trust these people i'm not doing my stunt could do that she's basically the stunt was doing it she's sitting just on a pipe that is full of fire there's smoke coming out of it she's just sitting on the pipe the pipe blows up and then uh she had to go to hospital for like two weeks holy was it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking hell. and then uh the last one that i have is all the snow in the movie what is a it's, aspe- <laughs> it's asbestos. Oh, what? Yeah, and what? basically, that's so much worse. They, that is horrific. Uh, they didn't know. I uh, don't think they knew how poison. No, they didn't. Poison. I think asbestos. Because asbestos is in houses. houses. It's in yeah, houses. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, the, anything that went on fire, any prop like the scarecrow suit had asbestos in it. And uh, there's a scene where they're all covered in snow. So they're all covered in asbestos. One of them's wearing a suit full of asbestos. The guy who played <laughs> the fucking real lion. The guy who played. <laughs> The scarecrow wearing an asbestos suit, drenched in asbestos, died of cancer in 1987. Oh Definitely because of asbestos poisoning. Like, yeah. That's 100% what it was like. Fuck, like. Holy crap. And I think. I think that's every single note. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I've honestly got the fucking apology, mate. That is. Yeah. You, you, you've outdone us. I've. Uh, I, I completely. Forgot this story. I don't know how I forgot the story earlier, but I have another story from something I worked on, and this one's like terrible. So I definitely can't say where this of was, course, what it was. Of course. Um, but there was someone who was working in the crew, and uh, I, I don't know what happened. This is they they got fired before I showed up. I didn't even start working yet. They got okay. fired, um, and they someone else coming in to take their place. They were in some apartment, and. Uh, Apparently, I don't, I don't, I didn't, I never met this person, yeah, yeah. so I don't know how true this is to what they were like. But apparently, the new person showed up to the apartment they were in and went into the bathroom, and there was just shit smeared everywhere. <laughs> oh, oh my god, god. No. like everywhere, and the toilet like emptied the bin into the toilet so it couldn't flush right. and just completely fucked up the whole bathroom Holy out of spite. Sh- what a fucking like how, how what a life. the weirdest thing is the person who did this has two kids oh my that, that actually I, is the weirdest thing that yeah. is that is meant I like, think and yeah, that's that's what I heard aside, yeah. aside yeah. from the shit smearing it, like having kids and doing that yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck that is insane. I've got one last one. I'm just going to throw it at the end here. Right, I'll, right. do one, I'll do one more. Okay. Time, we're, we're throwing in our last one. Yeah. We should have turned the lights down. It got real spooky. Yeah. With it. Yeah. It's, it's got spookier than I, I think we were expecting. But there is one that I always found was interesting. And I found this person's, this person's case always very interesting. There was a lady called um, Eliza Lamb who passed away. She was a Canadian student. Uh, and she was Welcome to the in... ghost part two. <laughs> <laughs> part two. Where we talk about everything spooky. <laughs> Burger King foot lettuce. <laughs> no, but uh, essentially, she was an American student, a Canadian student living in America. And actually, Mark, I don't know if it was in, might have been in LA, so maybe you know about this. It was called the Cecil Hotel. Uh, it's infamous as like the most haunted hotel. This cool, if, if, if this is the same story as thinking of it, it is I'd, very I'd say weird. it is. It's basically Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, yeah. lived there for, for a time, um, and he was one of the biggest serial killers in LA in the 70s. Um, one person committed suicide by jumping off. 
uh, the building and they hid a person and killed that person too. Uh, but anyway, I don't know why anyone would stay in this hotel, but she was staying in it and... Uh, Didn't the American Horror Story do this? Yeah, yeah, essentially. They need like, to yeah. just blow that hotel up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I think it's actually been knocked down since. Like, I, well, I, I, I just know it's. I think it's in the lab. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's operating. Not knock it down. Blow it. Up. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, um, there's video footage of Eliza Lamb um, acting erratically before she went missing. She's in an elevator. For some reason, the elevator isn't working. You can watch. Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, 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 she, yeah. she's poking her head out. It I looks didn't know like it was that hotel. Yeah, it looks like she's talking to somebody and she's acting erratically. She disappeared. Uh, a couple of days later, residents were complaining the water tasted funny. It was coming out black and discolored. They went up to the roof and found her drowned in the water tank. Mm. Now, her death is subject to conspiracy and all that stuff. But what I found was really weird about it was... So that happened. There's a movie called Dark Water that was released. Okay, and I'm pretty sure it's either Jennifer Connelly in it or Rachel Weiss. And it's about a it's movie a where... Exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's about... This woman and her daughter who are staying in this hotel room, they noticed this dark water constantly running down the walls. The water tastes funny in it and things like that. And then the movie ends. It's, I don't think the movie was any use, but it ends where they find out there was a dead body in a water tank and that's what was causing all this water to come down. That movie was released a couple of years before the death of Eliza Lamb. So it ha- the movie was made mm. way before okay, that yeah. actually happened, which is absolutely insane. I just couldn't get over that that it was released before. I, I still that's think that's like one of the story. most fascinating it stories is. ever. Isn't it? So Isn't it just it's like so you could just spend you could spend hours yeah. like I heard a really funny story about Richard Ramirez because uh, what he used to do is he used to basically just drive on the highway and he used to follow people on the highway. That's how he was so hard to catch because he had no like kind of hunting, hunting yeah, grounds, yeah, you know, yeah. like as they'd call it. And uh, one night he was pulled over and it, like the nice socket there'd been it, pictures of him drawn and everything and stuff like that and he was he was pretty rampant at this stage and the police officer came up and they started to get the chat and apparently he was out of charm and everything and the police officer goes he goes jokingly to him he was like you're not the night stalker are you Fuck and Richard God. Ramirez gets out and runs away oh my God. <laughs> and, and gets away <laughs> Night sucker, are you? <laughs> Darn, like, that, that's how the many other times? Like he's clearly getting out of the car because he's because he's like the night sucker. No, I will, sure I will answer you once I'm out of the car. Is <laughs> <laughs> I picture the the cop from Superman? It's like oh, it's the fastest kid alive. He can't catch. <laughs> but uh, I actually had like one little last one. Which was uh, kind of to do with Jared Leto. I was going to mention it when uh, you were talking about Jared Leto. But Heath Ledger on the set of um, uh, The Dark Knight had a notebook. And apparently it was the scariest notebook ever of uh, for, for his role as the Joker. And it, had, it was covered in like these Joker scrawls and these big lines and everything and stuff like that. And pictures of Alex from A Clockwork Orange and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the creepiest thing about it is on the very last page... It's two massive words saying bye bye. That is, and that's the very last. See, thing. my whole thing with that though is like, was he just saying bye bye to playing the Joker? Playing the Joker, yeah, yeah. Because like, like, if if, if I was getting that mind, I'm keeping that journal. There's no but fucking then, way I'm yeah. keeping that. But <laughs> then in an interview, Jack Nicholson was asked about like what did he think of Heath Ledger's death, and he goes, "I warned him." Yeah, yeah. Well, Which I mean, like, what the fuck, he's Jack? he's. He's Jack Nicholson. It's Jack. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jack. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah, that's a fair fucking point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like taking on the Joker role, getting to that mindset. Yeah. I'm so waiting to see what happens to so Joaquin. Like, I think, I think he's, 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 he's going to deal with it fine. He seems yeah. he he comes across weird, but I think he's like one of the most normal people yeah. ever. Like, because I got like chaotic I'm, energy. I've never heard. He goes. He has chaotic energy on screen. Yeah, like that's the, that film you were never really here. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, that's so what you're going to Fucking weird film, yeah. like you know, he plays a fucked up guy. That's a pedophile hunter, isn't he? Or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, like it's like people who are kidnapping uh, young girls kid, for sex kid, trafficking. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. 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 And exactly. he just goes around. I watched the first half an hour of that, and I fell asleep. But like, well, <laughs> I'll yeah. finish no, that one. The ending he is gets, so he gets crazy. Up you imagine? Yeah, he, he, it's a it's a very good. But he just he just seems like a very. I mean, he's he's gone through a lot. 
trauma in his Big life. Like, so, like, he just seems. Yeah, yeah, think yeah. of the fucking haunted shit. Apparently, that club where his brother died is yeah, fucking, fucking haunted. Poor river that falls. That's closed now, I think. Doesn't, doesn't, or didn't Johnny Depp own it? Johnny Depp owned yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, no, apparently, like, that thing has fucking ghosts crawling all over it. Yeah. River Phoenix was up to the road with the curve. No way. So was Johnny Depp. But he was still alive. Apparently. Brandon Lee was just like. That's a Johnny Brandon Depp's crow. Brandon yeah. Lee was so beefy. They were like, we need, we clearly need Brandon. River, River Phoenix was up for, I think he was actually cast in The Basketball Diaries. Yeah. No and he way. died. And then they put the whole movie on hold and made it like, I don't know, five years later. And that's when yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio. A lot of people say that if River Phoenix didn't die, Leonardo DiCaprio wouldn't have really had a career. 100%. Because like, cause like they, they look the same. Like, yeah. yeah. No, and he, in River Phoenix played and, those, I mean, like, even in The Basketball Diaries, like, Leonardo DiCaprio really looked like Mark Wahlberg as well. Like, I mean, like, a lot of those guys, <laughs> I think in the yeah. 90s they all just had the same haircut yeah, yeah. 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 banging haircut that is an excellent <laughs> film if, if you haven't seen it Fast Fall Diaries of course I fucking haven't <laughs> <laughs> every fucking time we're on the podcast I'm like yeah, I haven't seen I haven't that Jack, Jack's just watching Japanese art house <laughs> <laughs> Jack, Jack's watching the movies these American ones are based off yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh I haven't seen Old Boy but I have seen Other Boy yeah. <laughs> Round. I was just about to say this is perfect time to this is gonna be we've terrible. got a we've got a great chat, we got a little bit spooky now. I've got three percent battery, so random number you generator. I, I, um, did you want me to get a random number generator? Um, random, it's a random letter, letter generator. generator. Okay. <laughs> I can also, is, we had a hat full of letters for Kean, but now we have moved on to Okay, I'm gonna Oh god, that's really We're moving close. away from practical effects. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do it a couple of times and it's a bit crap. It's a crap. <laughs> Like it's you. No one like fucking likes you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, E. Okay, hang on. Okay, so okay you've you got you've got your letter. Let's get a timer. I'm gonna get the timer up now. Okay, you get the oh, questions. So to explain to our listeners, oh, we did this for our, our, our first. Do you guest want me to get the timer up and you get the questions? Uh, uh, I've, I've got the, the questions. Are you got the questions? Um. So to explain the rules, we did this with our last guest, Kian. And we all also did this. Um, we're gonna say you've got 45 seconds to do this. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna scream this at you. <laughs> so you, you are going to get a letter and once you have the letter you are going to be asked a bunch of questions like for example name an actor name an actress so on and so forth and we're going to see how, how many you can get in 45 seconds I think our top score on the last one and the only other time we did it was five, five. Yeah, five I, I yeah I'm probably going to get to zero <laughs> me and Ian got two two so, so it's, yeah <laughs> as long as you beat us as long as you beat you'll, you'll, you'll have some sort I'm of so let's see if you can top the list do you have ready yet? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, have, I, have, I know, I know, I know what this means. Huh? <laughs> Here, okay, is it ready? Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Jack's battery's near dead, so okay. So we, mama. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm laughing gonna, at myself. Sorry. I'm gonna count down from three, and then Jack's gonna yeah. fire them in right, there. Give him the letter. He got his letter. Your e. letter is oh, e. e. Oh, he's been, he's been thinking about it. That's okay. Okay, all right. Okay, I actually, yeah. <laughs> I'm actually, actually I'm struggling. I want to see a performance. I'm struggling yeah. even with this matter. You've got 45 seconds, starting in three, two. One go. Movie. Oh my god. Hey. You can skip also if you want. I'll skip and come back to it. Actor. <laughs> Eugene Levy? Levy? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Actress. Uh, skip and come back. I don't know any girls I uh, took. Director. That's a tough one. That's oh my tough. god. Hey. I'll skip it. Comedy film. Man. <laughs> <laughs> he is too hard. Like, yeah, it's uh, a bit shit. Like <laughs> uh, horror film. Really famous one Exorcist. Yes! Yes. Yes. Uh, give me a romantic film. <laughs> we can take Exorcist for your answer for film. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can give me another for... horror film. Really famous one. Do you have an actress? <laughs> oh my no, that's time. <laughs> what the fuck? Elijah Woodmark. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't think of anything. Oh, I oh my god. god. Oh, I literally oh, yeah. I just finished Umbrella Academy yesterday. Okay, like, Jeff. <laughs> so Mark, your score was two. Well, that was embarrassing. You're up there. No, 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 three. Because we're gonna take the Exorcist for both the horror film and the film. <laughs> the film. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So we. What we, is uh, another movie with A though? Uh, Edward, <laughs> <laughs> Edward Scissorhands. The, okay. elephant, oh, yeah. the elephant man. Well, fuck you, Taylor. That's T. That does not. Well, the Exorcist. Is... Yeah. No, I mean, no, no, no. no. <laughs> You're down to one. <laughs> well, um. I think that's on that on that bombshell. Um, <laughs> it's good to uh, finish up. Uh, 
Mark, I want to say thank you. Thanks so much for so, coming on. So thank you much. for having me. You were honestly like a phenomenal guest. Uh, yeah, I can't yeah, express that enough. Yeah, why did you outshine us? You really, like, really you know? brought the goods. And I just honestly, flying on the watch mount show. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think we could have talked for hours upon end. I wish that we we didn't have to end this for yeah. now. And hopefully you'll be a return guest again. So yeah, absolutely. Anytime you want to come on. And isn't there that thing like movies on the podcast? You got to get like uh, for your second time around. They have they you get them a, a certain color jacket. Yeah. And then the third time around, it's another color jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sort of But yeah, did you enjoy yourself, Mark? Not at all. <laughs> yeah, no, it was all going around until the end. <laughs> um, yeah. So listen, thank you so much again, Mark. Um, and as usual, guys, thank you so much for listening to the Full Feature Podcast. Um, you can follow us on all our socials on Instagram. Too. Huh? The polls. Ah, uh, you're right. Okay. Turn the competition. Has, Turn has stopped me in my tracks now to make me do I, my I, job. I ruined probably. his group. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, we are delighted to announce that we are bringing our polls back uh, next week. And we'll be starting those on Tuesday. So keep an eye on our Instagram stories. And will I announce what the poll we're doing? Yeah. Okay. We're going to be doing um, Marvel movies, um, which... It's a safe bet. Most people have seen. So the, the bulk of the movie. MCU is in it, and then like a couple of ones we wanted to throw in. We had to throw in a few extras to make the Last Man Standing kind of yeah. format work, and there's ones that we want in there too. So keep an eye on our soldiers and be voting for those, uh, and uh, we'll see who the winner is by the end of the week. Uh, and then also keep an eye out for our competition, which Tiernan mentioned at the start of the podcast, where we'll be sending. Two people to the cinema <laughs> with us. You have to come with us. You are going to the pictures. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you, you can't sue if you get COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to go. Like, you simply... I would like to say if you haven't been to the cinema yet, get get involved in this competition because it is such a pleasant experience. Yeah, it really is. Not having to sit beside random people. Or and especially if, only people who want to go to the cinema are now currently going go to, the to the cinema. cinema. Yeah. And you can go see Tenet, which is the only movie out at the moment, or you can watch <laughs> Lord of the Rings 3. <laughs> like, why not? You've or got new, new, new Mutants is currently out, although I've heard nothing but terrible things. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so next week we're going to be talking about Tenet, uh, a movie that absolutely confused the shit out of us all. Um, yeah. And we're going to be talking about that at length. We'll also be talking about New Mutants. And I think there was a third we were going to talk about. Uh, Richard Kaufman's. I'm thinking uh, Charlie about Kaufman's. Charlie. Uh, fucking. <laughs> the names. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, a, it's been a long day. Copa. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be talking about Charlie Kaufman's new film as well, which is landing on Netflix. Um, so, as usual, guys, thank you so much for listening. A big thank you again to Mark McKenna for being such an excellent guest. And if you guys haven't seen Sing Street or Wayne or Overlord, watch them all. And also listen to his band. Check out Milk. They're on Spotify. Yeah, Check them out. Milk. And uh, yeah, thanks again for listening, guys. Please follow us on our Instagram and on Twitter, and give us a five star review on.